Ace Podcast. You're listening to Super Co-op Squad, episode 27. 27. Yep. That's pretty good. Bueno. Hey guys, thank you for joining us and welcome back if you are a long-time listener and uh, welcome for the first time if you are not to the uh, Super Co-op Squad video game podcast. I am one of your hosts, Johnny Mack, and I'm joined alongside and with my fellow hosts here, Garrett. Hello. And Joshua. Bang, bang. So, um, a lot of stuff to talk about, guys. It's been a pretty fun week and uh, I'm excited to get into it with you guys. How are you guys feeling? Let's do it. We got a lot of stuff to talk about talk about a lot of stuff we're excited and maybe not excited about yeah i'm excited about most of it so uh every week guys we sit down we talk about all the latest and greatest news announcements and uh game reviews on anything gaming related movie related pop culture related we just talk about anything kind of nerdy have a lot of fun and just make make sure that we we give you the news and our opinions on everything that's been going on uh before we get into any of the news and announcements from this week uh, (laughs) yeah that's that's the old spoiler warning right there so uh, if you guys don't want to be spoiled, uh, make sure you guys go ahead and check out the uh, the link to our show notes. You can find that in the details and description of this episode. You can also go to supercoopsquad.wordpress.com. And there will be uh, the show notes there for you as well. That way you'll be able to look at the timestamps uh, and you'll be able to see what we're talking about and skip past it if you don't want to know about it. Uh, and you know, this is a good time to check out the show notes, guys. We've actually kind of revised them. They're a lot better. They're going to have links to everything we've talked about. They're going to have video of all the trailers for you now. So we've upgraded this is a show notes 2.0 going forward, guys. Uh, there'll be a better just um, a better accessory to the podcast. So if you want to check those out, guys, please make sure uh, you do that. Uh, if you don't, then we're going to keep moving forward. You know, no need to pause, and we'll just keep on trucking. Um, so this week we have quite a bit to talk about. We'll be getting into uh, some of the fighting game stuff that's coming up with uh, Injustice and uh, Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. Uh, Nintendo has some cool news with a, a new lineup, a new add-on to their uh, their handheld lineup. And uh, we'll get into an opinion piece this week. Uh, DC TV, so DC Comics TV series versus the Marvel movies, and which is creating a better universe uh, for their properties there. To start off, though, we're going to go ahead and jump into some fighting game stuff. So fighting, ge- fighting game fans, you got lots to rejoice about, lots to talk about. Uh, This week, there was some big news for both Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite and Injustice 2. Uh, We'll start off with uh, the MVC side of things for you there, Joshua. Um, Yeah. So they released their uh, their full trailer, and you, you, we got a a, a text in the group message, and you were just (laughs) going bat crap crazy, man. I was very excited. Well, first, they didn't show the official launch gameplay trailer. There was a quote-unquote leaked footage of gameplay. I was like, hey, Johnny, have you seen the gameplay yet? What gameplay? For Marvel. What are you talking about? Go watch it. Come back. Garrett kind of already did that. And then later on in the week, they showed an extensive gameplay trailer. And I'm all for it. Uh, They also still... Oh, no. The first one was a story trailer. And first thing they show is Sigma. I lost it. I'm a huge Mega Man fan for, for everyone who doesn't know already. And Sigma is probably one of the cooler uh boss overall arch enemies in you know, in a whole series compared to other stuff. So yeah. just to kind of take a take a break, Joshua, who is Sigma? Sigma is the evil reploid of all the robots in the Mega Man series. And Mega what, Man X. Mega right? Man X, I'm sorry. And what he can do and what he does over time in those games is he pretty much replicates his own body and merges them with different androids and he becomes a bigger beast. And he's just out to destroy all humans and have reploids or human robots take over the world. And Mega Man X is trying to fight him to stop him. And Sigma's the boss in almost every Mega Man X game. <laughs> yeah, so this does make a lot of sense. Um, they talk about that storyline trailer. And in this trailer, they they show Sigma and the Marvel villain Ultron, who kind of wants to do the same thing, make a bunch of himself replicate and kill all the humans. Well, he sees humans as what... Uh... Inferior, essentially. Yeah, like yeah. They're, kinda, just... they're ruining the world in a way. I don't Evil think he, Jarvis. I don't think he cares if they're ruining the world. I think he just sees himself as superior okay. to them, and thus they are not worthy of existing. Okay. Um, but yeah, so you know, merging these two villains essentially is, is what they're doing, and it, uh, I think you had said, you know, an author we're talking about, you had said that this was like a perfect segue into like why 
we have this clash of two worlds sort of thing. And in, in the previous Marvel, I see games, what you did there. Yeah, man. Uh, and <laughs> in the previous Marvel uh, versus Capcom games, there's no real reason that you're given as to why these two worlds have collided. Well, They're just fighting. I mean, it's like a new age of heroes, you know? Yeah, that's what that's what we're getting. You you tried. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, so I think this is good just for the storyline aspect. It's something new, too. They don't really have a lot of storyline stuff in, in older Marvel games, right? Yeah, and this to me, this makes sense because, uh, as I just described, Sigma has the ability to change and merge with other androids and kind of replicate himself. And Ultron has a technology where he can probably figure it out. He makes you know, smaller clones of himself, and to merge those two together for uh, Ultron Sigma... I, I think they could have came up with a unique name, but you just yeah. merge them together and it makes sense. Not only is it cool, but it makes sense. Yeah, and they, I think it just projects a really cool story that they can build these two worlds upon, and now you actually have a reason why there's a crossover in this series. Yeah, and if you haven't checked out the trailer, uh, again, that trailer will be in the show notes for you. Just click on the show notes and then check out uh, the trailer. It'll also be available on the website for you, so you have two places you can go and check those out uh, if you're not sure on what's going on here. They had a lot of characters they revealed as well. So any anyone that stands out, b- before we do that, we'll just break them down. Uh, so Strider, Hear You, uh, Chun-Li, Chris Redfield from Resident Evil, um, and then from the Marvel side, we've got Hulk, Thor, Hawkeye, uh, Rocket Raccoon, and Ultron uh, that have been revealed. Yeah, those are in the, the new uh, cinematic trailer. Mm-hmm. On top of some that we already uh, knew about, Mega Man X, Morgan, Captain America, Captain Marvel. Ryu. Iron Man. Iron Man, yes. Yeah, so they've got about 14 characters that have been announced in some way. Um, out of this new little group of like six characters, anyone stand out? Anyone that you're still waiting on that you expected? I'm surprised that out of everything that they revealed, there's no real new characters besides Sigma and Ultron. Yeah. We found out who the bosses are. They're individual characters that you can play as. They announced Ultron is a character that's in the game. Sigma is a DLC character. They announced six DLC characters, and he's the first one. Was Thor in the last one? Yes. yes. Okay, cool. There we go. Thor was in, uh, I don't think he was in Marvel 2, but he was in Marvel 3. Okay. Um, you know, so as a Mega Man fan, you're you know expressing a lot of just happiness. You're seeing Sigma in this game. He's not really something in the, in the Marvel vs. Capcom fighting game community, though. So will other fighting game, you know, aficionados like yourself who enjoy this series, even, you know, will they care about this storyline aspect, or is this something that's not necessary? I don't think it's necessary, but I think it's cool just to have. The Marvel vs. Capcom 3 had a lackluster story. You have Galactus as the bad boss, and that was a cool fight scene. But this one, we are now focused on you know, the MCU and how it has a big, broad story, and these characters are intertwined with each other. And to have you know Disney and Marvel Studios try to project that into a game, I think it's a really cool idea, and I think it's worth checking out. And you know, the core of the game is the fighting, and that's what it's really going to come down to. And for players that haven't played this game or really like this game, I'm curious to see not only the the gameplay, of course, the two v two, but like characters like Sigma. How how is that character going to play? Is he going to play like a big grappler? Is he going to be a fast character? Is he going to be like his Mega Man X uh, version or something else? Yeah, I, I wonder if they're taking more of an approach with like Injustice or even Mortal Kombat in the last couple iterations where they. Even though they're they're fighting games, they are very story heavy. You know, those yeah. games are played not only for the combat, but people enjoy the, the single player campaign. It's a good call yeah. out. I would argue uh, that you know when it comes to stories and fighting games, it's not really all that great. Like, I mean, what's the story of Street Fighter Four? You know, yeah, it's. I mean, to be movie. fair, Street Fighter has one of the most <laughs> convoluted like backstories that you can think of. Yeah, but m- my point being, people don't really get the fighting game for the story of it. Um, Personally, I love Injustice story, but they had a whole comic book, you know, leading up to the first Injustice game. Uh, so that is an exception to me. But as, as far as story goes, like it's it's nice to see that you know Marvel or Marvel's Capcom is also taking a stab at it. You know, I, I disagree. I think I think in the past it was kind of just an an extra that you could throw in there just for fun. But now, like looking at the the fighting game kind of scene in the last couple of years. There's going to be those hardcore players, but then you need to also get sales. You need to get numbers. So how do you do that? You need to add in and incorporate other things like a storyline and a campaign. And Mortal Kombat is has done that amazingly well, and Justice does it amazingly well. And I think that I think that's important. Now you can't you can't deny that. Even with Street Fighter Five, it didn't. It still does not have a great story uh, right. campaign. But the backlash that Capcom got for not including that at all was huge because people. 
over the last couple of years have come to expect that as part of what you get in a fighting game. I, I think I think it's very, in my opinion, I think it's very necessary now. I, I, I would I would disagree. Um, still, yeah, fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> but, but what but what a story does is it allows you to reach the casual audience that yeah. doesn't like to play online or just doesn't want to get swept by people that are really good, and that's yes. the fear for a lot of people that are casual players for fighting games. They go online, they get worked really hard. And they might get teabagged once or twice, and then they're like, "I just, I don't want to play this game anymore. It's not fun." No, no so. I, I, de- I definitely agree with that. I think maybe that's why For Honor went with a with a story mode. Mm, their story mode is rough. I don't know if I'd use that as a good example, though. Well, my point being that people don't want to because if it, it was it was advertised a multiplayer only game, mostly right, and so pe- people buying that game bought it to play online. Correct. Um, if you're one of those casual people who are not really big or competitive or anything. They had a story mode for you. It's not great, but it's there. Yeah, I I, I see what you're saying. I think, I, I personally, I'd rather have no story than a crappy story. If you're gonna give me a storyline, then give me that. Or you can give me like the old school Mortal Kombat and Street Fighters. Just give me a single player, you know, beat these fifteen guys in a row type thing. I, I'd rather have that than yeah. than like a phoned in storyline. I, I always did kind of like those arcade kind of stories where like okay use this character when you beat the boss of this character you get this character story yeah you know it's yeah. not connected to anyone else really yeah that was that was fun as well um so you know one thing i noticed here is on the marvel side of things it is i mean we expected this of course but it is extremely avengers and the marvel cinematic universe heavy it is yep. there there's no spider-man there's no x-men that have been announced and i don't uh, yeah. think that we will see them much we talked about this in the past and yep. I mean, as far as the legacy of Marvel vs. Capcom as a series, those are characters that have been huge staples. So yep. going forward, if they don't have them, does that is that a good or a bad thing? I, I think they uh, first of all, I think characters like Spider Man will be in there because that's what carries the franchise, and that not just Marvel but Marvel vs. Capcom. I think they're just kind of playing it out cool right now. You put in some characters you're familiar with, characters you know, and then you release them a little bit at a time, and then towards the back end, then you throw those hard hitter characters that you love and you want to see, and that's going to bring that hype. Right before the game's launch, you know, is it um, is it something that you that you want to see where that this this roster is probably going to change quite a bit? It's it's not going to be the X Men heavy, you know, Marvel vs. Capcom two or three. It's going to be mostly Avengers and stuff from the MCU. And we might see Daredevil and characters from the Netflix Marvel series. I don't think we're going to see anything mostly from the Fox side of of what's owned for the the screen rights. Yeah, not not in the game. I think that'll be DLC down the line, down down the line. But I think I think we're that's- lucky. Yeah, hmm. but I think that's okay. Just come up with something unique, create characters that you know we want to come back. But also, I'm okay with new characters, something fresh. Don't give me seven Resident Evil characters. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that'd be rough. I'm I'm disappointed that Wesker, uh, Chris, Jill. <laughs> Wasn't Nemesis, Nemesis. In one of them? <laughs> I want. I hope Leon's in the game. I would prefer Leon yeah. over Chris. Oh, uh, Ashley. <laughs> no, you can't do it. So, Sheva. <laughs> I need a herb. <laughs> No, I I, th- I think it's good and bad because you have to appeal to the fans and what they want, but also you want to be new. You want to be uh, interjecting a little bit more flavor to it and, you know, Marvel and Capcom. So I'm curious to see what they're going to do. Yeah, I, I feel Capcom has much more free range over just throwing in whoever they want, really, because Marvel and DC, they have all these character, or not character, but they have all these rights kind of limitations. You can't put in too many, you can't put in any mutants, maybe, or Spider-Man's maybe iffy. Fantastic Four, uh, talk to Fox. Well, I think, I think, to be fair, at least in this particular situation, uh, Marvel's uh, film rights are very locked and in, in kind of set in stone. But for video games and other properties, they have the run of, of, of the gauntlet they could do what they what they like so this is i think this is them choosing not to incorporate a lot of those characters okay. they don't own the film rights to in lieu of the fact that they don't want to market these characters that they don't own the film rights to because they, they want those film rights back okay fair enough yeah fair plus enough. this game looks a lot like contest of champions too not really familiar with that game personally it's the, it, you see it in advertising all the time it's the, the the mobile game okay i'm familiar with that game i'm not <laughs> yeah you, you probably <laughs> Yeah, we know. We know. <laughs> so uh, real quick, uh, in the video, in the trailer, they showed a couple of unique things. They showed off three of the six Infinity Stones, uh, which is pretty cool. Have unique properties. Uh, they have four super meter bars instead of five. It's tag team 2v2. It looks like they're going to be best of rounds, which you haven't seen in a Marvel versus Capcom game. It's usually you fight till both characters die, and then that's it. But it looks like it's going to be a best of three series. 
in there. And there's a couple, uh, there's like two or three characters that had a level three super that didn't have them before, such as Thor. So I'm hoping that every character gets a level three super and kind of changes the dynamic of the game. Yeah, I think, I think just based on what you're talking about right there, a couple of, th- what they're trying to do here is, is sadly enough, they're, they are kind of catering to the lowest common denominator. We talked earlier about like storyline and that being something that draws in casual fans and people who want to play the game and just have fun rather than be very competitive online. Like you said, just get, just get stalked and just wrecked. Um, you know, dropping to four meters, making it so it's best of like Street Fighter, you know, you know, the first one to get two wins versus, you kill a guy, then kill the other guy like it has been traditionally. Those are those are those are things that are gonna make it very easy for people to come in who are new and not so much for the hardcore player. Yeah. That's just not that's not a good thing for me. Yeah. Uh, not not to argue your point. Um, I think the reason that they're going with the kind of like the round system thing is one, they took away a person. So it's no longer three V three, it's two V two. Makes it's the true. matches a lot shorter. Yep. So give them a give a couple of rounds. Yeah, that's one thing. And the health bar looks like it looks like you take more damage and the rounds are kind of shortened, to your point. One other thing that they added, very similar to Injustice and Mortal Kombat, is you can you can spend two meters to break out of a combo. That's, that's I think, is really important but, for yes. Marvel vs. Capcom. But yes. the way that they're doing it is you... <laughs> the way that they're doing it is you don't break out of the combo. You're, you're, from what it looks like, is your other partner Assist, comes kinda. in to stop the attack. So you can predict or have a mind game if you know that they're going to try to break out. You can tag in that assist to 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 kill. And another thing is, if your partner for your assist character gets tagged in, and you're trying to tag out, you can hit them, but they don't lose that extra quadruple damage as in Marvel <laughs> Three. So they're making it more balanced and a little bit more even. And I like that. So I'm I'm very welcoming to get my hands on it. I'm I'm hoping it's going to be at an E3 because if it is, I'm going to stand Ooh. in that line to play that game. Well, bye, Joshua. Yeah, I'm sure I'm sure it will be there. Um, last thing here, uh, the release date is set for September 19th. How do you feel Ooh, about that date? A lot sooner than um, we all thought and yeah, hoped. Yeah. You know, I, I had expected it this year. Of course, I didn't think it was coming next year, but I think it's a pretty gutsy release date for a fighting game to come out right at the end of the summer, right before the holiday period when you're going up against Call of Duty and whatever their shooters and AAA titles are going to drop. So I, I'd argue maybe that's the better time. You don't want to do it, obviously, when those shooters are out and everything. A yep. fighting game compared to a shooter, probably not going to do so well. Well, typically and usually, we're going to get fighting games in April, May, you know, March. Even that's where Street Fighter releases. That's where Injustice is releasing. That's that's where that's where yeah. fighting games come out. So yeah. they're yeah. just bucking that trend and going whole hog. Yeah, but it's better to have it earlier than later. We well, this don't is want, later. This well, is later I mean, than compared normal. to like holiday, like you don't, if you can release it in September compared to November and December or 2018, do it and say people don't want this game because of Call of Duty, Battlefield, Star Wars. You have the whole holiday season to make up your sales. Well, hold so. on. You don't think it would have been better for them to release it now or, or, or wait till next year? No, May, don't May. wait till next year. Capcom can't or, wait. That or, or even if they had released it this year, May, because... This year, May is, I'm not saying, I know it couldn't have been ready then, but my point is that <laughs> re- releasing it in the spring gives you four solid months before you start having to go head up against the heavy hitters. Keep in mind, we're also getting a Red Dead Redemption this year. Every every one of those big AAA titles that you go up against in October and November are going to pull sales from them. I'm just saying it's a gutsy move. I don't yeah. know. Fighting game fans will buy the fighting game. Regardless yeah. of the other games, I mean that, and and I would say getting it in September, you still have you know if if you're worried about you know um uh, money or sales or anything, you have you know a good two three months before you have to start worrying about those other games. And it's not going up against injustice. Yep, so. I, that might have been their only reason why they didn't put it out around this time. It's very, very. I also possibly. don't think it's ready. It may not be. Yeah. It may not be. But hey, bring that segue. Uh, so uh, switching gears over to Injustice 2. So yeah, they had some big stuff here. So this is more your forte, Garrett. So gameplay was revealed uh, for several characters we've known about. Um, and they re- they officially announced one new character uh, coming back we did not expect. So they finally showed gameplay for Darkseid and, uh, and Brainiac. And so Brainiac. two of the, the big main villains, at least that we know of, um, in the game. Yeah, yeah. So uh, this is really good. They, they started off early in the week with uh, showing off Brainiac. Uh, who is the the kind of villain of the story mode? Uh, we were talking about story earlier uh, for this fighting game. Uh, Brainiac looks crazy. He kind of actually reminds me of Doctor Octopus though, because he has these tentacles coming out of his back and just yeah. you know comboing people. Um, he he looks he looks pretty fun. Uh, so I'm interested to see more of him. Uh, do, does he come with the game? Do you have to beat the story mode to unlock him? Probably. Uh, so that'd be nice. They finally showed off Darkseid, who they've 
teased after every single video that they had. <laughs> yeah, it's the <laughs> same video of him walking around. We're like, okay, we get it, we get it, guys. Yeah, pre order, got it. Uh, they finally showed them off. He has a whole different kind of stature. Uh, he's just walking around with his hands behind his back. Kind of reminds me a lot of General Zod from the first yeah. game. Doesn't doesn't he do that in like the show though? He's always like proper and just kind of standing and I'm overviewing the world because I'm a god type of thing. Yeah, I think they make him look like he just doesn't give a crap. Like he's not he's not threatened by anyone in front of him. Exactly. Uh, they got his omega beam, so you can use a uh, couple of ways. I think they even showed him shooting behind him. Yeah, yeah. It's, coming it's on the so other weird. side. Yeah, I like so that. That that's really cool. Um, I expected his super to maybe have his omega beam send you to a different kind of dimension, kind of like you know, uh, Return of Bruce Wayne kind of thing. Uh, I thought that would have been pretty cool, but instead he shoots you out in space. Uh, then a uh, mother kind of wormhole uh, shows up, and a giant hand kind of grabs grabs you, pulls you in. Turns out it was Dark Side the whole time. Um, <laughs> he just throws you. Yeah, he just throws you. So uh, Dark Side looks really cool, and of course Joker. They finally release Joker. Uh, they haven't quite explained how he's going to be how how he's in here. Uh, if you played the first Injustice, Superman kills Joker. That kind of spawns the whole thing. They travel to a different timeline or universe, multiverse or whatever, and and Joker's there. But for him being in in this particular game is different. He has a new look. Kind of looks a lot, kind of like uh, maybe a Jared Leto. I'd say maybe mixed with the Heath Ledger. I actually like it. I like this Joker. He has a different super. It looks like he plays uh, similar to the first Joker, but he has a different super in which he knocks you into an electric chair, locks you in there, beats the crap out of you with a crowbar. Um, I, was, I was very happy. Very happy How to see How much of it. a nod was that? It was a huge nod. To, to blows make, him up. Uh, to make uh, Just, basically death in the family, whatever yeah. happens to Jason Todd, make that his super, uh, I think is really cool. Uh, a really good shout out. Yeah, yeah I like it a lot. Um, so they don't have a lot of surprises left from what I see. They have quite a few characters. Are, I mean... It's got to be most of their lineup already announced. What's left for them to have you, you know, pick up the game and say, oh, you know, this is awesome. This is a surprise. There's very little. So as of right now, um, I've, I've watched a couple of streams and there's still two two boxes that are not, uh, I guess, revealed. There's two silhouettes missing in the character selection screen. Um, could it be DLC? I don't know, because they, they've announced nine people. So I would assume there'd be more. But I think there's still two characters they have not released that are going to be in the base game. Watch them be like guest characters. I'm, it's very I'm, possible. I'm okay with that. I'm completely cool with that. Um, so uh, as far as what they can show you to get this game, they've also introduced uh, what's called the multiverse, which is basically kind of think of the living towers from Mortal Kombat. You get challenges. Uh, some change every hour. Some change every day. Some change every week. And it's just ways to get uh, gear. Uh, they're they're relying heavily on this gear system. I, I think it's pretty cool, but I've I've got some reservations about it when it comes to competitive play. Uh, but basically, each world has its own challenge and its own kind of mini story mode. So I think that'll be really interesting. I think that'll pull a lot of people in. Uh, the one they showed off was, you know, Superman's evil. General Zod's trying to help you out. Uh, General Zod's kind of the good guy in this you know, in this multiverse. Uh, so I- I'm pretty, I'm really interested in seeing all the gear that you can win, all the different challenges there are. Uh, I-, I will be on that a lot. Okay. And they haven't officially announced the season pass, but of course, if you buy the ultimate edition or one of the two, you get the the nine additional DLC characters. Um, so they've got to have a season pass, I'd imagine, right? I don't know. They have not. They have. I mean, if you if you're going to be one of these companies and you're going to have a season pass, that's going to be one of the things you're just jamming through the door. Like, hey guys, pre-order, pre-order Dark Side, pre-order Dark Side. Also get the season pass. Well, also keep in mind, maybe not because if they want you to buy the ultimate edition, they won't talk about a season pass. If you you know, they just make it sort of an implied, hey, the ultimate edition has the nine characters. That is the season pass, even if they don't say it. I, I would argue because normally when they do that, they have it at a slightly cheaper cost, maybe ten, five bucks cheaper or something they, like they that. They can still do that. Uh, we'll have to see because they still haven't even announced it. Yeah. Um, uh, the ultimate edition comes with nine adi- uh, additional characters, DLC characters. If you get the digital deluxe edition, which I believe is eighty dollars, you only get three uh, of those nine. So I, I I don't see that as a season pass. And how would you sell half a season pass in another edition? You wouldn't. So you would. You would wait till all these DLC characters release. You'll announce that there will be a season pass for future DLC. 
Okay. Po- that, that is a possibility. But yeah. uh, as of now, they have not mentioned a season pass. We're just kind of guesstimating. Yeah. Um, well, they'll, they, they, even if there's no season pass, they will release these characters separately somehow. Absolutely. So. Absolutely. Uh, Dark Side will also be released uh, additionally. So if you haven't pre ordered it, if you're just not a pre order person, you can still get Dark Side later on. Uh, down the line. All right, and that releases uh, May sixteenth, so just a couple, couple of weeks of away. Weeks, I am counting, All counting right. down. So our first game segment, fan favorites. You guys know how this works. Ten rapid fire questions, each host answers. We let you guys know what we stand opposed on and what we stand united in uh, for our fandom. So play along and find out what are your fan favorites. Joshua, you had the pick, sir. Yes, I did. So this pick is not a Joshua pick. This is a fan pick. This is a listener pick of. Uh-huh. Ah. So I had uh, three girls that I know that <laughs> listen to the show. They enjoy it. Melissa being one of them, Garrett. So I have Melissa, I have Hi, Tiffany, Melissa. and I have a tennis. They told Hi, tennis. me that we're going to do Disney sidekicks today. Woo! So they're big Disney fans. I know you, Garrett's done too much Disney stuff, <laughs> but it was a request and I had to fulfill it. Hmm. He had to, Johnny. It's not even his fault. It's hmm. Disney. Thanks, guys. Sidekicks. All right. Did they did they did they curate this entire list or did they did you do this? So they curated the list and I kind of put the ones that probably will go together with their assistance. Okay. This Fair. was I'm I'm being dead honest. This was all them. Fair I'm enough. Excited. They they read they read off a big list. We had to chop it down. I'm excited. Okay. All right. Cue the music. Johnny Olaf or Spot from the Good Dinosaur. Spot. Mm, Olaf. Olaf. Iago or Zazu. Zazu. Uh, Zazu. Iago. Jiminy Cricket or Sebastian? Sebastian. Sebastian. Sebastian it is. Hey Hey from Moana or the White Rabbit from Alice in Wonderland? Hey Hey. White Rabbit. (laughs) Hey Hey. (laughs) That's my answer. Pascal from Tangled or Ray in Princess and the Frog? Ray. Pascal. Pascal. Genie or Baymax? Genie. 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 Pegasus from Hercules or Mushu from Mulan? Pegasus. 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 Abu from Aladdin or Miko from Pocahontas? Abu. Miko. (laughs) Abu. Thumper from Bambi or Gus from Cinderella? Gus. Thumper. Gus. And lastly, Doug from the movie Up or Dory in either Finding movie. Doug. Ah, uh, <laughs> I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Dory. I'm gonna choose Doug. Do, 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 do. Oh, <laughs> That's sorry. the wrong Doug. R- wrong all right, break it down, sir. We all right, all right, all righty. <laughs> so we have Olaf or Spot. I just hate everything about Frozen for the most part. Jeez, so. Olaf. He loves warm hugs. He knows stuff about things. What? He's, no, he knows nothing. He he, doesn't, he wants to be. Uh, he wants to just well. Have a tan on the beach. I don't even remember the other option. What was it? Spot. Spot. From yeah, it didn't matter what it was. Olaf. Little, little, little cave boy. Yeah. Serious. Anti Olaf. It, yeah. yeah, it, it, it wouldn't have mattered. It could have been a pile of of dog crap, and I probably would have said pile of dog crap. Jeez. Dang. I mean, I'm not a big fan of Olaf, but uh, over Spot, I'd but, pick him. But you picked him. Yeah. So there you go. You're a bigger fan of him than than Spot. Oh, yes, I am. A couple good laughs, even though he doesn't oh, yeah. know anything. He's I thought, been impaled. Well, I mean, and then to be fair, again, I would have picked anything, but Spot was a very endearing character in that movie. I really liked him, mm-hmm. and it was fun. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. I thought yeah. it was cool. Okay. He was he was the best part of of the good dinosaur. <laughs> so. <laughs> All right, that's another topic. What, for what's funny day. is my my wife left that movie so angry. Really? Yeah, she does. She did not like the fact that the uh, that the human was made to be like a dog. Oh, uh, yeah. That, that 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 was the whole spin on the movie, though. Well, no, it the, the, been the, the whole spin was that the me- the it, meteor didn't come and and take out the dinosaurs, <laughs> and dinosaurs progressed faster than the humans. Um, I think I think from the trailers, it's kind of more inferred that humans are cavemen. And he was not a caveman. He was he was a dog. He was not the little boy. Was not like a, a caveman traveling with a smart dinosaur. He was the pet of the dinosaur. Very different thing. Yes, he was not a caveman. He wasn't like you know caveman. That, like that's that's how they acted. Even when even when Spot met with the rest of his family, they were acting the same way. And, and yes, you're right in the movie, but you don't see that in the trailer. So like like all right, she, I think I think what she thought, and I I thought the same thing was it was more like. The good dinosaur, the dinosaurs were smarter and the humans were like the crudes. Maybe not like that, like stupid, funny, but like they were still human just or or the Flintstones. They were like that. 
And he was not. They were like animals. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, we're probably going to get an email or two. Maybe. Bashing somebody. <laughs> All right. Iago or Zazu? I mean, Zazu is just cool. Right? Zazu, he, Zazu. I, I feel Zazu. Go ahead. And he, he's just, I don't know, he's nice and he's kind and he cares about people and he helps. And but he's a little bossy. Yeah, but Iago is a it's, thief and he's villain and he's bad and he's ugly and his voice he, he is turned, annoying. Yeah, the voice is annoying, but he turns good later in the later movies. O- only, only really because he has no other choice. <laughs> hey, <laughs> a lot of people don't have a choice but to go to the other you side. Go, That's not, <laughs> you go with the winning side. You have yes. a choice to not be a villain all the time. But it, if he was captured and tortured, then you have to be the villain. But we don't see that in the all prequels right. to Jafar. And how he comes to be. I mean, friends. he's a bird. He can fly away at any point in time. Jafar grabbed him half the time. What? Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. That's yeah. th- He was also a sorcerer. Maybe he had some spell on Iago. Or, you know, go tell the Sultan you can speak. The- Have you seen the Sultan? He's shoving crackers down his throat every single time. <laughs> Polly want a cracker? Cracker, cracker, cracker. <laughs> Rah, right in his throat. I'm just saying, as a talking bird, he had some option that he chose not to exercise. Yeah, Zazu actually was looking out for, you know, Simba. Simba was just being a kid and... You chose Iago. No, I didn't. No, he didn't. Oh, okay. chose Zazu. Okay, good. I chose Iago. Ugh. On my face. He might be an ugly bird. I but... choose Mr. Bean over Gilbert Gottfried. I, I, I second that. <laughs> Jiminy Cricket or Sebastian? The seaweed's always greener in somebody else's lake. Uh, you didn't about going up there, but happen. that is a big mistake. I'm not, I'm not doing I'm this not one. Gonna... Nope. Just look at the world around you. <laughs> Anyway. Right here on the ocean floor. I, I really like Jiminy Cricket. I appreciate that he's always trying to keep you on the right path, but Sebastian's cooler. He's Such thinner. wonderful things around you. Yeah, the better scene, Did voice. you say that line already? What more are you looking for? Oh, no. I don't think he did. That's fine. I didn't. He tried. <laughs> so, uh, Sebastian, it is. Under the sea. Go ahead. Killed my vibe. Under the sea. Moving along. Kiss speaker. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> <laughs> Don't give him ideas. Next, uh, Hey Hey from Moana or the White Rabbit from Alice. Hey Hey, just because it's funny. And the White Rabbit is kind of cowardly and annoying. He's everything that you don't want to have like in your office. He's very twitchy. Like I, He reminds me of, do you ever watch the movie Office Space? He reminds me of that guy like, my, my stapler. My stapler. My stapler. My stapler. <laughs> I, believe, I believe it's my stapler. Always afraid and always looking behind your back. Yes. Like, I'm late. I'm late. Like, I don't, you, should know, <laughs> you should know that you're late. You have a freaking watch in front of you. Yeah, but. and you're a rabbit. You're supposed to be fast. Yeah, uh, I don't like him. He's annoying. I was over Hey Hey after five minutes of Moana. I was done with him. He's a little comic relief. He's cool. He doesn't I, no, bother I get you. It. I get it. I understand why he was there. I'm just over him. I, I think he's awesome. He's great. He was great. He helped later on. He did help a tad bit. Did he? Yes. Yeah. He swallowed the heart at the feet. Oh, yep. that's what we wanted? From preventing <laughs> them going it? into the little... Yeah, it was about to like fall yes. off. Yes, exactly. So there you go. Ah. All right. Pascal from Tangled or Ray, Princess in the Frog. Ray. I, I just really don't like Pascal. You don't like chameleons? You don't like the chameleon? I don't like the Pascal? chameleon. No. Did her hair and everything. I just don't like... He was, he was, he was going to beat up Flynn if he didn't treat Rapunzel right. I don't like sassy animals. Like, it's all sassy. Like, I will I will take you in my hands and rip you in half, iguana monster. It wouldn't happen to Pascal. I'll tell you so that why, so why do you like the Firefly? I just don't like Pascal. He, so, he's just anti-Pascal. Yes. Uh, much like anti-Olaf. Yep. Wait, ooh, he's no, just I, too busy hating. I'd pick, I'd pick Pascal over Olaf. I know, day. but in this, in this situation, you're just hating. Yeah, a Anti-Disney character in this segment. All right, next, Genie or Baymax? This is too this unfair. Yeah. This is too <laughs> Poor Baymax. Baymax never said there's, there's some people that really like Baymax. Nobody in the, nobody's picking Baymax over the Genie. I bet you that the young generation will pick Baymax over Genie. I guarantee I would argue that. You that they will not. I would argue that. Wishes, I so. I, Robin Williams, for every, you're done. For every, I, have, I have plenty of little nieces and nephews. For every one of them that chooses Baymax over Genie, I will give you five bucks. I, I am <laughs> so certain that B- Baymax is not cooler than Genie. At I'm all. not saying he is at all. I'm just saying that a lot of people like Baymax. Who'd you pick? Genie, of course. <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> Why are you asking me this question? Okay. We're all on the same page. Okay. okay. All right. Pegasus from Hercules or Mushu from Mulan? I mean, I think we all were in the same boat nope. that we can, we can ride. Yeah, we all chose Pegasus. Nope. You chose Pegasus. Garrett did not choose Pegasus. Yes, he did. I chose Pegasus. No, we he all, did. Yes, he did. <laughs> I don't he recall. Did. 
We we all chose Pegasus for the I, same I, reason. I fought with it. You can, maybe I'm wrong. My you bad. Can fly, you can fly, you can fly. On, a, on a on a horse. I mean, My sure you I could. I I just actually like Pegasus more than Mushu. Um, I don't. Mushu's just, just a tiny dragon. Yeah, what's, that's the only what's, problem. What's he gonna do? Exactly. I I, I like the little Mushu. magical dragon lizard. Yeah, I like Mushu better, but you know yeah. I can ride this thing. Well, no, I actually like Pegasus better. I don't. You I can just, fly. He, 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 Pegasus will save you. Yes. Oh, well, I, like him. I, I just want I just want for the fact that he's he's a utility. Like, he's got I can, attitude. I can just use, him. use him. Yes. <laughs> that's that's like Mario uses he's a Yoshi. horse. That's what. You, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> yes. Punch Pegasus in the back of the head. <laughs> so, fly. My, my bad. For some reason, I thought you picked. Nah, that's okay. Right. Abu and Miko from Pocahontas, the raccoon. I can't believe Garrett, you picked that disgusting, dirty raccoon. He's a over raccoon. Abu. And Abu is actually responsible for a lot of the problems that Aladdin has to deal with. He's but actually he was the steal, one that stealing, stealing, apple, stealing apples, which Aladdin was already doing, but Aladdin would have got away with it. Abu got caught. Yeah. Aladdin gets in trouble. He was perfectly fine, Aladdin, just grabbing the, the lamp in the Cave of Wonders. What does Abu do? Oh, look, a shiny jewel. Let me activate the death trap. Are you remembering the movie wrong? I think you're remembering the movie wrong. Abu was the one that saved them by stealing the lamp back. If Jafar would have stole it either yes, way and probably if, kicked them down the cave of wonders. If Abu would not have stolen stolen the treasure, he would have handed he would have handed Jafar the lamp, not knowing what it was, and that'd have been it. And then Jafar would have won because he would have had As, the genie. It, that that was all up to Aladdin surviving that fall or, or surviving. The fall wouldn't have happened if without Abu taking the treasure and setting off the cave of wonders. Aladdin would have walked back out the cave, do, 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 handed the far, the you know the the thing to Jafar, lamp, maybe huh? lived, maybe lived, maybe not, who knows? But Jafar would have had the lamp because Aladdin had no idea what it was and didn't care. So I, I don't think if, you can really thank Abu for that. I think we can. I do. Yes, I agree. I do. Yes. I agree with Johnny. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> All right, I still pick Miku. He's he's a raccoon and he's adorable. He's a those are filthy, disgusting. Nor animals. does he get Pocahontas ever in trouble, and ne- she's never put in a life threatening situation because of Miku. Maybe not, but you know, realistically, I can have a monkey as a pet. Raccoons are vicious, nasty animals. They so. steal your cereal out of your milk bowl. Realistically, Agrabah doesn't exist, but monkeys do. <laughs> <laughs> yep. All right, so we got Thumper from Bambi or Gus from Cinderella. Gus, I pick Gus. I'm not a big fan of Gus. They can make me close. Gus, Gus. They can sew them up, stitch them together. I just like the fact that I can talk to a mouse. Make me a suit. You can't talk to Thumper. You're not a. You're not an animal. No. no. Well, there's never. A, no. Besides the hunters, never a human implies you don't. Know exactly. That. If they could talk to the the animals, I don't think he'd just be hunting them for sport. Well, he, he doesn't know he could talk. Clearly, to them. I'm trying to think. Does Cinderella actually talk to Gus Gus? I think she does talk to the animals. Yes. I don't, I don't know. I think they just talk amongst each other. I think so, and she kind of just guesses at it. Maybe, but it seems like she knows. So that's. I'm going to take it that she knows. She Fair talks enough. to them, and they. Talk exactly and like they out they, loud, but I don't think she hears yeah, them. Yeah, that's what I'm going with. But maybe I mean, she, maybe rabbit. she just cares not to respond, you know, because she's better than them. Wow, dang. Well, then, not according <laughs> to her sisters, maybe. <laughs> All right, and the last one, Doug versus Dory. Up versus Finding Nemo slash Dory. He's a wonderfully loyal, nice dog. He was my least favorite part of that movie. <laughs> Did you pick Dory? I picked Dory. <laughs> what happened last time? This, last time we had this sort of thing. Yeah. You said Dory. You said you didn't pick Dory because you'd have to watch her your whole yeah, life. Yeah. If I if I put her in a fish tank, I'll be fine. <laughs> okay. Are you sure they escaped the fish tank before? <laughs> Dory has <laughs> nice. <not>. Nemo has. <laughs> No, at the oh, end of the yeah. second movie, yeah, she, yeah, she yeah, escaped she quite a few. It yeah. took a truck and some sea yeah. otters. And, and you're worried uh, about... A very bad accident. You're worried about a fish tank. <laughs> Stole a <laughs> truck full of aquarium fish. <laughs> I just I just think with my dog, Vader, if I could put that collar on him and just hear the words that come out of his mouth, who just love me so much. Let me in! Let me in! <laughs> <laughs> I, I just don't, I don't like Doug. And then I'm thinking if I put, my, put that collar on my dog, Tails, she would just have mean things to say. Don't yeah, touch me. Probably. Get away. Yeah. Don't look at me, human. My bed. <laughs> My bed. <laughs> oh, so, man. Thanks for the request, ladies. That was fan favorites. That was a good one. Yeah, it was fun. That. Uh, you know, we've had a lot of Disney going on, but you know, it is what it is, yeah, I guess. Perfect we're, for me. We're, we're uh, the, the, the 90s generation, so what, whatever. Um, but yeah, this was Fan Favorites, guys. If you enjoyed what you heard, let us know uh, what you thought of Fan Favorites and what your choices would have been. You can reach us on uh, Twitter at Super Co-op Squad or by email, supercoopsquad at gmail.com. 
And just m- much like we had uh, some of the ladies that uh, Joshua knew, knows, Melissa, I, I just want what I know is Melissa. Melissa, Tiffany, and a tennis. Yeah, so, you know, email us, shoot us out some uh, some requests for themes or, or just a, a, a top 10 list and uh, let us go go down and break it down for you. Um, and that is uh, fan favorites. So Nintendo announces a new addition to its handheld lineup, the Nintendo 2DS XL. What a surprise. So this is getting a little convoluted here. To me, that actually was a surprise. It was to me as well. Uh, so this console is going to be um, kind of their middle ground uh, console. It's going to come in at $150, uh, which is essentially going to be a 3DS XL console. Uh, so two screens, a closing hinge clamp design, uh, but without the touchscreen capability. So no touchscreen, much like the the, the, uh, the tablet-like 2DS. Um, the door stopper. Yeah, pretty much is what it Wait, looks like. There's no touch. There screen? is no touch. I'm sorry. There's no uh, 3D. There is touch. I was going to say, I'm sorry. To, you have to play almost all the games. With my, my apologies. So there's touch screen. There is no 3D capabilities. Yes. Uh, so this is going to fall in line between their, their other two consoles, the 2DS and the 3DS XL. Uh, those are priced at about 100 bucks and uh, 299 respectively. So this comes in right around the middle ground at 150 bucks. Um, you know, this being where it is and in the life cycle of the 2DS and 3DS, is this something that is necessary? Personally, I don't think so. I, I agree 100% <laughs> this is not necessary. <laughs> just make another 3DS and just make it cheaper. Unless this is like very profitable for them. If they're making like 70 bucks out of this. Well, I, I understand why the 2DS exists. I'm not a fan of it. I don't care for it. Um, but it's it's for the younger crowd, yeah, you know, most the, the 3D kind of strains the eyes for them and everything. And this is more affordable than, you know, all of the other three DSs you can think of. See, now I felt I felt personally that the 2DS was not even worth making in the first place other than just it being cheaper because it doesn't have the hinge. Because the original all the 3DSs so far, there is a feature just to yeah, turn just off to turn the 3D. Off. So if that's a problem for you for your small child, to use it because it is bad for a child under 10 years old to use the 3D features of anything, especially the small screen, just turn it off. Well, I'd argue, one, it's cheaper. Two, just because you tell your kids not to use it doesn't mean your kids aren't going to use no, no. it. No, don't, no, don't, don't tell them. Lock it. You can lock it so they cannot change the feature. Like, like, it, like in settings? Yes, okay. in the settings okay. so that no matter what, oh. turning it on or off, it does not matter. Moving that button around or the, yes. the switch, the okay. toggle, yeah. yeah, it stays off okay. no did, matter what. Did not know that. So okay. I, I felt that the 2DS was, was not necessary anyway. Um, I think this is just uh, important because the 2DS design, just it being flat with two yeah. screens in the front like a tablet, but yeah. it didn't ergonomically look very nice. It didn't fit very well in your hand. The screen got cracked a lot easier because it couldn't close to protect itself. Stop doors pretty well, though. <laughs> um, I, th- I think that <laughs> it really does look like a doorstop. Um, I think that this is a redesign they're doing on purpose because I think they probably realize a lot of people don't use the 3D function anyway. Like, I never use it, ever. Nah, so- sometimes when I'm watching a cutscene, I'll watch it in 3D. Never, never uh, for me. The game plays in 2D. So I'm gonna disagree with you, Johnny, on two fronts. Number one, I think they made the 2DS not only to make it cheaper and cost affordable, but I think it was easier to break a 3DS with a kid because of the hinges, because of pulling it open so far, you eventually snap the back of it. It's a fair point. Uh, you were correct. It ergonomically, it, it looks terrible, but for younger audiences, it does fit nice for them. And I think tablets were a big growing uh, industry at that time, so I think they were trying to assimil- assimilate that. Secondly, I think that they're coming out with this one because now with all these tablets and phones and these bigger versions of phones, maybe they want to enhance the gaming experience for kids to make a bigger screen, but still not sacrifice, you know, the, 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 the 3D touch and some of the things that the kids would use. So and I don't know if it's, it's in the middle of a 3DS, a new Nintendo 3DS. Uh, I mean, this, like this, switch. this will do well. Like, it's going to sell well, 150 bucks. It looks nicer. It, it It's going to do fine. But dang, uh, like, I don't think it's going to sell well. And I think they're going to cancel it three months in. I they're going to discontinue wow. it because highly that's doubted. what Nintendo does. That's highly yeah. Switches discontinued. Yeah. No, no, that's not a thing. <laughs> this is gonna, this is gonna fly off the shelves during holiday. At 150 bucks, yeah, this, this, is, this is gonna is be going. gone during the holiday. This is going. We shall see. But you know what? The thing I look at is. The the DS the three DS li- lineup has been out for a long time. Like, at what point do you do you move on with a better a four DS? Well, just I mean, <laughs> from the standpoint of 
processing power, graphical power, like what the what the console can do. When do you move forward with that? Yes, I know that they, they had a, a redesign a year or two ago with the new yeah. 3DS model. I yeah, I didn't go anywhere. They no. made, what, one game Exactly. For that? They've I, had, I think, no, they had two. They've had two games that, that actually utilize the the better processing power and speed that, that, that can't run on the original. I think that was Xenoblade right. Chronicles, and yep. there's one other game that's that's escaping me. But that's the other Steam. Game, that's not <laughs> uh, that. That's not enough for you to have this redesign, and that also means that people aren't utilizing or or needing in, in the games they're making now that that better processing power. So, what are you going to do? Like in the world of yeah. tablets, where you can play AAA games on a tablet, your consoles, your your handheld consoles, falling farther and farther behind. I suppose that's why the Switch is there. Yeah, I, that's why it's there. Event. I think the 3DS will last another. One and a half to two years on a on a semi strong lineup because you can throw a Pokemon on there and it's just going to explode. Boom. So, so do you think then that they are going to move forward at some point and kind of continue handheld? Well, no, and and no. and absorb handheld into the Switch. Yes, yes, I do. Like fuse it? You think? Is, is well, it, no, they'll just end up instead of having a 3ds lineup and then a Switch lineup, they'll just have a Switch a lineup Switch. for handheld games. I'm sorry, just a Switch lineup of games in general because it, you can do both. There's no, there's no distinction. I I'll, think. Go ahead. Go oh, ahead. sorry. I think this uh, 2ds XL and then whatever's going to happen in the next one and a half to two years is going to ease people into the Nintendo Switch as they hopefully become more readily available. Yeah. And they're just. I mean, it happens to all video game consoles or handhelds. Just it's not going to have that lifetime support. So I mean, look at the Nintendo games that we've gotten over the last six months. It's not a whole lot. We had Kirby at the end of last year. I'm sorry, Kirby this past six months. We had Pokemon at the end of last year. And what other big 3DS title came out? Like, not a whole lot. Right. For At least from first party, they're definitely slimming down. They have a couple of third party. But yeah, it's slim. Mm-hmm. And next month is Fire Emblem. Okay. So that that's one. But yeah, something. And they've got a few, but that's still very sporadic. Yeah, one yeah. here, yeah. one there. They just yeah. There's not a ton coming out. Absolutely. Yeah. That's but, why I give it two years. Yeah, but I agree, Joshua. I think that they do start kind of absorbing their handheld market into the Switch because it's already, like you said, it's already on the go. And, you know, you don't lose anything if you do that. Matter of fact, we talked about it in the past when in our in our Nintendo Switch episode. I, I felt, and I think you, you might agree now, they actually have more to gain by making those two markets one because gamers who weren't playing their handheld games but have but want to play console games at home now will play handheld. Yeah. And console gamers, vice versa. So you, you get the best of both worlds with one console. I mean, we'll see what they do, but that's how I feel, and I think you agree. So my brother, <laughs> I put this on our Facebook page. My brother told me he's like, "I can't, I can't stand this. This is no surprise. I don't like it. It's stupid." He <laughs> said, "This is stupid because give it a couple years, you're gonna have a Nintendo Switch XL, and like a you have your regular version of the Switch. It's gonna drop in price, and they're gonna come out with a new model." He's right. So this defeats the purpose. And I said, "You know what?" That actually kind of makes sense where give it two to three years, you maybe improve the graphic fidelity. You're able to improve <laughs> the memory capacity of the Switch. And then you have a newer model and the older one drops in price. And now you have like a 3DS priced Nintendo Switch. All right. I'll be on Breath of the Wild in two to three years. <laughs> just buy it on the Wii U, <laughs> Yeah, man. Just, just play it already. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know how long they're going to continue this 3DS train, this 3DS train moving. Um, I think Gary, I, I, I disagree. I think that this is going to sell very well this holiday, just at the hundred fifty dollar price. It's going to do awesome. I don't know. The two DS didn't sell very well. I but th- th- this is yeah, it's this is different. Well. Uh, where it is basically just a three DS with its three D turned off. So right. yeah. they already yeah, have a limited more successful. Wow. Oh, um, um, Dragon Quest. I think yes. it was. Yeah, it looks so clean. <laughs> All right. So every month, uh, Microsoft and Sony, respectively, they both bring out um, quite a, four to six free games uh, for their online gaming subscribers. Uh, and we take time each month to break down the offerings that they give us. So starting with games with gold with Microsoft, we have uh, Gianna Sisters, Twisted Dreams, priced at fourteen ninety nine. Uh, Lara Croft and the Temple of Osiris. Priced- Lara. Laura. I, I, I don't know how I did that. Wow. Lara Croft and the Temple of Osiris, priced at nineteen ninety nine. Star Wars Force Unleashed 2, priced at $19.99 normally, and Lego Star Wars The Complete Saga, also normally priced at $19.99. This has a total retail value of $74.96, coming to you completely free if you are an Xbox Live Gold subscriber. 
So what games stand out to you guys? Uh, two games I'm excited for. Force Unleashed 2 and the Lego Star Wars Complete Saga. Um, really not much to add to that. Just I like Star Wars and I like lightsabers and I like Legos. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I'm surprised uh, Lego Star Wars didn't come out earlier. I would have thought this would have been a Games for Gold title a long time ago. But granted, we're in a Star Wars like binge phase right now. It's a good time to come out. And uh, I haven't played uh, Temple of Osiris. I'm not going to say the name because apparently I say it wrong every time. Laura. Oh, so does Johnny, apparently. Shut up. <laughs> but that, that is a multiplayer game that is just, you know, all action kind of like 2D and 3D world. So, and so it's kind of like dungeon, dungeon crawling where uh, you guys have to use each other's abilities to to navigate through temples and, and you know, progress through the story and everything. Um, I believe it might actually be up to four players. I think it so. is, yeah. yeah. It's a good um, multiplayer game from what I've read. Got some pretty good reviews. Just never yeah. picked it up, and this is a good reason to. So, funny thing, uh, Sony actually released this on their PlayStation Plus months and months ago, yeah. po- possibly a year or two ago. Yeah, you know, you said the, the the two Star Wars games were your two big ones. This the the Lara Croft one's actually the one that I was most interested in. I played it before. I really like it. Like we said, it's, it's a, it's a four player co op game, so that's really cool. And then it's it's a top down shooter, which is one of my you know little yeah. classic you know uh, niche games or niche uh, genres that I really like. Um, so yeah, this, I think this is one of the better, better games with gold lineups we've seen in in yeah, several months. A while, yeah. yeah. Uh, the last one on that list, Giannis Sisters: Twisted Dreams. Uh, not uh-huh. one. Of, yeah, <laughs> it, it's it's a platformer. It's not one I'm very familiar with, but you know, coming you know for free, I'm I'm definitely down to try it and play it. You know, I like free. I'll take a look at the trailer and just download it if it looks interesting to me. I'll I, download. I it. I just never understand why you don't download you have every free of room, game, dude. You don't have to keep it on your library of downloadable games. Have it if on it your account. If it doesn't look like something I'll ever play, then I don't want it. Just mm. install it and delete it. Nah, I don't this want guy. it. All right. So the PlayStation Plus games that they're offering. It's uh, about Tales, a message. <laughs> Tales from the Borderlands, priced at fourteen ninety nine normally. Uh, Abzu, priced at nineteen ninety nine. Blood Knights at nine ninety nine normally. Port Royale Three Pirates and Merchants at twenty dollars. Laser Disc Disco Defenders, priced at nine ninety nine. And Type Rider. At seven ninety nine, uh, total retail value priced at eighty two dollars and ninety four cents. Um, so as usual, uh, PlayStation brings six games. Um, you're normally uh, all six are playable on PlayStation four, uh, and two of them will be offerings normally from PlayStation three. So if you still have that console, you can still play those two, and two uh, are from the PlayStation Vita. So that way, if you have one console, not the other, you still have two games. If you have a PS four, you get all six. Um, you know what? I don't know this list very well, to be honest. Um, Tales from the Borderlands is the one that I'm most excited for. I've, I've played it. I like it. Never beat it. So I'm down to you know, to knock it out. I already got it on my Xbox. Yeah. Oh, okay then. You can do that. Um, I think Abzu was a game that launched in the last year or so. so it's that underwater so, experience. Yeah, that's the one I'm looking forward yeah. to. That, I think, got a lot of praise as an indie I, game. I don't know much about it. I think it's just sea exploration and kind of... Like Echo the Dolphin from I, Sega. I don't think sure, like but you're Echo not a dolphin. dolphin. They need to bring back Echo the Dolphin. I don't think they do. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Sega's gonna keep that one. <laughs> Out of all their IPs <laughs> franchises, Echo is the one that needs to come back. Echo HD. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, Blood Knights. Yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah, maybe, maybe Port Royale three, but yeah, the rest seems a little bit like just shovelware. They're kind of tossing at me. Where are the other two Port Royales? Um, I, I think, think they're PC PCs? titles. Yeah, okay, that's why I don't know. It's a pirates game. Yeah, it's, oh, it's cool. Okay. Pirates, pirates are cool. Eh, they're okay. I'd rather be a ninja. Yeah, that's the age old question, though. Ninja for sure. Yeah, <laughs> not so dirty and disgusting. Well, um, flip. Yeah, but but either way, you know whether these are titles that uh, we know or not, you know it's always nice to get free games for most of us. You know, be Garrett excluded. So uh, check these out, guys. You have one month to download most of these, and some of the other half will come out at the at the halfway point in the month of May. All right, so our second gaming segment, gamer trivia. So each week, two of our hosts go head to head in a best of five trivia contest. The winner stays in place again, and the loser makes next week's question. So play along and see just how much gaming knowledge. You have in gamer trivia. So I sadly went down last week. I did not know my Game Boy. Come on, you gave up on that one. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> so this is this is uh, this is my trivia this week, and I yeah I like I like usually using the fan favorites sometimes and uh, and using that as as a as a springboard for gamer trivia. All right, uh, I need another hint. I, I like guessing. Doing the hints. Okay. Um, but I'll, I'll do it. 
I'll do it for you because you enjoy it. I also like trying to guess. It's like Fine. trivia before trivia. Yeah. So Except there's no points. And the points don't matter. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> they they don't matter. Um so he 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 was a a supporting character in uh one of the original games that Mario was in. Yoshi. Wait. No. And uh Luigi. that what? Mario was in. <laughs> I just wanted to say that name. He's got an affinity for uh for barrels and throwing them, lugging them. Man, you're gonna give some Donkey Kong trivia. I'm giving you guys Donkey Kong Country trivia. Donkey, Donkey Kong. Kong. Oh, Country. Donkey Kong Country. Donkey Kong okay. Country trivia. He's talking okay. about Jumpman, and then he segues to Donkey Kong Country. Well, I said he has a supporting <laughs> role in the very first Mario game. You were not listening. That's all. <laughs> Donkey Kong has a supporting role in the very first Mario game. <laughs> Okay, I see what I did wrong there. <laughs> Mario has He's a supporting, supporting role. Thank everybody, <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I told you I'm not good at giving the hints. All right, so this is Donkey Kong Country trivia, all from a uh, Donkey Kong Country number one. Whew. All right, gentlemen, here we go. Oh, I thought we were gonna sing. Damn it! Sing what? Hey yo, no. Donkey Kong, let's go, no. let's go. Here it comes, Banana Slammer. <laughs> wow. What? He's talking about the, the, TV, the TV show. show yeah. Alright, so question one. There are several animals that Donkey Kong can ride in Donkey Kong Country. Which of these is not a rideable animal? A. A rhino. B. An ostrich. C. A swordfish. Or D. A grasshopper. I have both your answers. Garrett, you chose D. Joshua, you also chose D. Yep. <laughs> the correct answer huh. is D. Grasshopper. So you could ride a rhino, an ostrich, a swordfish, and a frog. And a frog. There was no grasshopper. There's also a parrot, but you can't ride him. You cannot ride him, no. <laughs> Spits out what? Crackers. Nuts. <laughs> They're crackers. <laughs> Alright, so crackers. Garrett, that's one for you. Joshua, that's one for you. Tied right. up going into All question right. two. It's going to be tough. It's going to be interesting. Question two. Much like in Super Mario with mushrooms, Donkey Kong can receive extra lives by popping balloons. Which of these was not a balloon color? A. Blue. B. Yellow. C. Green. Or D. Red. Which of these was not a balloon color? Answers one more time. A. Blue. B. Yellow. C. Green. Or D. Red. Not a color. Garrett. You chose B, yellow. Joshua, you chose A, blue. The correct answer is B, yellow. So uh, you had three different colored balloons, blue, green, and red. Each one gave you different amounts of lives for uh, for popping that balloon. Yellow was not a color. Uh, so Garrett, that is correct. That's two points for you. Uh, Joshua, that is incorrect. You are at one. <laughs> Why are you shaking your head at me, Gary? Because I know you're just going to win at the bonus question. <laughs> <laughs> question three. Alongside Donkey and Diddy Kong, several other DK crew members are featured in the game. Which of these characters does not appear in the original DK? A. Candy Kong. B. Kitty Kong. C. Cranky Kong. D. Funky Kong. Which of these does not make an appearance? I have your answers. Garrett, you chose B. Joshua, you also chose B. The correct answer is B. So Kitty Kong does not make an appearance in I don't I believe any of Donkey Kong countries. I believe that a character only comes up in Donkey Kong 64. What are you talking about? Are you oh Kitty Kong? Kitty Kong does not make an appearance in Donkey Kong Country. What was the uh DJ? No, in the third in Donkey Kong Country Three, that's that's Kitty Kong. Yeah, that is Kitty Kong. The baby is named. You're Kitty right. Kong. Yeah, that's right. Kitty Kong. That is correct. You're right. Well, so this that is Donkey Kong Country One trivia. This is Donkey Kong Country One. So that is uh, correct for both of you. Uh, Garrett, that gives you three. Joshua, that gives you two. You're still in it. Question four: Of the DK crew who appear in the game, each has a function. What function did Candy Kong have? A gave you extra lives b played a bonus game on the swordfish c saved the game or d let players travel to other levels immediately i have 
Garrett's and Joshua's answer. Quite quick, fellas. Um, Garrett, you chose C. Joshua, you chose C. The correct answer is C. Save the game. So Candy Kong had the the task of allowing you to save the game whenever you could get to her. So that is correct for both of you. Uh, Garrett, that is four correct. Joshua, that is three correct. So still just down one. We in it to win it. Question five. There are many types of barrels with many different functions in Donkey Kong Country. Which of these barrels is not in the game? A. Fuel barrels. B. Stop and go barrels. C. Star barrels. Or D. All of these barrels are in the game. Again, A. Fuel barrels. B. Stop and go barrels. C. Star barrels. Or D. All of these barrels are in the game. I have your answers. Garrett, you chose D. Joshua, you chose D. The correct answer is D. All of these barrels are indeed in the game. So uh, fuel barrels, you know, they're fuel, you know, blow up. Uh, stop and go barrels, they pretty much are used in the uh, the mine cart sections. Those terrible, terrible, oh. fun, but hard mine sections. Um, pretty much stopped and goed. Uh, and then star barrels were like checkpoints. Um, so yeah, that is uh, correct for both of you. Uh, so Garrett, that is uh, five. Joshua, that is four. All right, gentlemen, we are down to the uh, salty sudden death Jeopardy style question. You know how this works. Go ahead and uh, let me know your uh, your points you bet. Correct answer, you gain that many points. And correct answer, you lose that many points. This is very reminiscent of the Roger Rabbit trivia. <laughs> we actually it should be tied. This is the exact same thing that happened. I have Garrett's bet. Joshua's no bet. <laughs> <laughs> I have Joshua's bet. Your question, gentlemen. There are several different types of enemy in Donkey Kong Country. Uh, there is a there are crocodile villains in the game. What is the name of the crocodile villains in Donkey Kong Country? So there are different types of, of crocodiles, but the entire race of those anthropomorphic crocodiles have a name, have a, a race type. What is the name of the crocodile villains in Donkey Kong Country? Much like there are different kind of Goombas or Koopas. All right, I have both your answers. Garrett, how certain are you of your answer? Um, I was certain until you asked that. Joshua, how sure are you of your answer? I'm not really sure. I had my, my gut immediately told me, and I was like, you know, I probably don't know. Okay. Before I give the uh, oh, the on. answer, <laughs> we'll give the bets. Oh, that's the first. Garrett, okay. you had five points to bet. You bet all five. Yep. <laughs> Going big. Joshua, Going big. you had four points to bet. You bet two. Oh, wow. That's two more than I thought you'd bet. <laughs> So you either have to be right, or I have to be right. Garrett. That's usually how this goes. <laughs> and Joshua. Yes. Your answers <laughs> were both Kremlin. Yes. The correct answer for, for the type but of I villain. But I lose if I don't are, get it right. The, the correct answer for the crocodile villains and their type are Kremlings. That is a correct answer from both of you. It's a bold I shit. thought you didn't know, man. You took so long. I'm like, I got this. So that gives you, Garrett, 10 points. It's a high score. Joshua. GJL. Or should I put S? <laughs> Joshua. <laughs> AAA. Joshua, <laughs> Joshua, that gives you six points. I was close. Uh, you were very close. Uh, Garrett, that gives you uh, this week's win. The perfect score. You got a perfect score. Uh, you were very uncertain, but you pulled it out, Joshua. Yeah. You're, Perfect. Your, was, was your, that your answer, he, he he sent it to me. It's, it's a Kremlin question mark. <laughs> <laughs> that, that immediately came to mind. I was like, Kremlin. The more you think about it, the more you doubt yourself. And I was like, that that sounds so It sounds ridiculous. So cool. I thought um, you were going to ask what the villain, the boss villain was. No, King K. Rule. Yeah. That would have been too easy. No, uh, I thought you were going to ask the little, the little small the chomping chomp ones. Chomps? And I'm like, I have no idea what those are. Those are uh, clap traps, right? Clap traps. That's what they are. Oh, I did not know that. I, I could be wrong, but. I think I think they are snap snap jaws or something like that. Fact check it. We'll, we'll, do later. Check it later. we'll do it later. All right. So, Garrett, that leaves you with the nice. champion. Uh, the champion for this week. I will uh, see you as the challenger next week. Joshua, you will be on trivia duty.
Man. <laughs> he did well. Everyone did well. I'm yeah. I don't I don't doubt him, but I'm I probably wouldn't have bet all my points had I got five points though. Well I don't think I want I wanted to go big. And I, I if I did I if I did win, I wanted to be the one he wanted to, to have the 10. perfect score. Yeah. I wanted to have the high score. He gotcha. was either it was either take it all or yeah, leave with nothing. Exactly. So fair enough. I'm well, happy, congratulations. I'm happy with this result. Ass. Good. <laughs> it's good you're gonna put. That's, that's right. his high score. <laughs> all right. I don't know what it stands for though. Ass. <laughs> <laughs> hey, squad mates. It's really fun for us to continue to bring all the news and content and all things pop culture, but not everybody knows about us. Once again, we love to expand our audience, and we need your help. Just tell your friends and family about us, check us out on iTunes, and subscribe. What you can also do is leave us a review. Again, we'd love to hear any feedback and things we can do to better the show for us and especially for you guys. We'll come out with all the latest news and trends and pop culture goodness. If you missed an episode, you'll never miss a beat on iTunes and catch up on the latest and greatest that we have to offer. Don't forget, you can also be part of the squad by emailing us your comments, thoughts, opinions, and fan faith and trivia notes. Thanks for listening and back to our show. So we're going to have an opinion piece here. Uh, DC. TV. I have opinions. You, you do. We're I gonna, have pieces. We're, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna talk about <laughs> it. We're going to put them together. So DC Comics TV shows versus the Marvel movies. Who is creating the better universe? So DC has an extremely strong viewership with their, their Arrowverse, if you will, with Arrow, Supergirl, Legends of Tomorrow, and uh, several new shows like uh, Titans on the way. How uh, dare you leave out Flash. And Flash, I apologize. <laughs> uh, Marvel, of course, has their strong stable of cinematic universe uh, movies with their Avengers and solo movies, but haven't really dropped the ball yet in either critical acclaim or box office success. So just quick little notes here. So both companies have had some struggles finding finding success in the other in the other group's sort of uh, niche there. Uh, DC does an amazing job with their TV shows and their direct-to-DVD animated films. And Marvel, of course, as we know, does a great job with uh, with their films. But have had some struggles, even with Netflix. You know, if you, if you really think about it, in the last couple of uh, series, uh, having continued success. Um, either way, they both have strong universes on both sides, and you know which one is is, is winning that war. In my opinion, that's a tough question. That's really not is. one I can easily answer. Um, and me being a DC fan, I I can't. Well, DC over Marvel anyway. Um, I I couldn't wholeheartedly say DC's winning in the universe run. I think if you're looking like. Dollars for dollars, I think Marvel's winning because those are big box office hits and those are generating multiple movies hitting multiple billion dollars in revenue. Yeah. So if you look at the big picture as dollars, I think Marvel's winning. If you look at the scope of, I think, the stories and the characters. In the, and, the universe itself. Yes, I, DC, in my opinion, takes the cake on that one. You know, you, you bring up a couple of good points. And I'll start with what you said with the box office and the money they're bringing from, from their film with Marvel. And I, I don't think you're wrong there. Just not even from the standpoint of the fact that the movies make money, because even if the movie were a flat wash for all their films, the amount of money they bring in from just all the endorsements, all all of the the movie not movies, the merchandise, uh, the merchandise, the TV, the mm-hmm. TV, uh, the shirts, Possible the video toys, games. yeah, all of those things that is generating a lot of money for for Marvel. As far as the stories and and just the world building, I really feel that DC might have a stronger a stronger build with their TV show in that Arrowverse and, and yeah. them continuing to expand that in a way that we're not getting with, with Marvel from their from their films or or from their from their Netflix shows. I would agree with that. Um also because when it comes to the DC TV universe, we also have, you know, we have time traveling, we have alternate universes that's how super gold gotten got into the mix yeah, it's all multiverse yeah there's there's multiple universes and multiple stories they can go whereas marvel the marvel movies uh it's it's sure it's span around you know space or you know we're over at um or we're at asgard you know new york city it, it it's all kind of just in the same universe though um where dc has the the opportunity to travel to space time and alternate you know, realities and universes. You know, the thing, the thing that I think about as well with which one's making like the bigger, the bigger success building a universe that people can latch onto is that DC has everything under their own control. They make all their own decisions and Marvel is stuck. I mean, to be honest, we'll just be honest here. They're stuck with their, with their second rate group of, of heroes as their big success. 
If we look before before the last 10 or 12 years, the Avengers, to be honest, are nobodies. Captain America, although he might be a great hero, he was not the the, the bread and butter of, of Marvel. Of Marvel. Yeah. No, yeah. It was, X-Men. X-Men. It was the right. X-Men. Yeah. X-Men, Spider-Man. Yeah, Spider-Man, the, the, the group. The Fantastic group. Four. <laughs> yeah, even Fantastic <laughs> Four point, on the comic point, yeah. side. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And these these heroes, they don't own the rights to, to make media for. I mean, even Hulk. Like, doesn't, doesn't Universal still, I think, own the character rights to Hulk? Mm. Or does Marvel have them back? I think Marvel might have those guys back. Okay. Yeah, hopefully. Um, but yeah, they're they're stuck, you know, mining their their B list, uh, and they've done a great job doing yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. But it, it's it's really hurt their their I'm, ability I mean, to. Ant Man got the movie. Yeah, Ant Man, <laughs> Doctor Strange. If you'd have told me five years, ten years ago, you know, are we gonna get a Doctor Strange movie? Never in yeah, my wildest yeah. dream would yeah. I have thought that. Black yeah. Panther, Black Panther, yeah. Captain Marvel, and that's great. Oh, they're yeah. bringing these properties. But is it because of necessity that they that they can't? But they go? have no other choice. Exactly, they don't have another choice, and so they're bringing these guys out. And DC doesn't have that problem. Yeah, they yeah, they can true. they can go with the biggest guys, Batman and Green Lantern, or they can go you know with minutia like the DC Legends Legends crew. See now that that brings up another thing though is that since Marvel has their hands tied behind their backs and they they have to use certain you know they're they're limited and they have to use certain uh, heroes that not too many people know about. They have the opportunity to make these heroes huge, to turn these B heroes into an A hero. Yeah. Where DC, they're using their biggest stuff. They're using Batman versus Superman. And how did that turn out? Mm. Yeah, you make a good point there, right? Because if Marvel is, even if let's say they're they're at parity and they're both equally successful, Marvel's doing it with their B list guys in the spotlight, and DC's doing it with their with their best biggest hitters. That's not good for DC if you if you have to bring out your best and you and they're on and par. And you're falling, yeah, yeah. Or, or, yeah, yeah, falling yeah, or behind. On par, or on par. We'll, we'll go with that. Yeah, we'll go with on par. <laughs> um, but I mean, that yeah, that's a great point. But I mean, let, let's just it's it's tough to say because you you really can't know for sure which one is winning. But I mean, if we look at it from two different standpoints, money and merchandising and marketing, I yeah. think Marvel's got the yeah, cake yeah, there. Yeah. But DC might have. You know the, the the better option, the better universe, the better. I don't want to say better stories because that's completely something else. They have the opportunity to have great stories. Yeah, that, you know, with the setting that they have, the universes that they can use, the material that they have. But I think Marvel has everything more fleshed out. Yeah, I think I think there's a a, a bigger plan at work with Marvel. Um, and and I think it's also just because with TV shows, there's so many episodes you can't. You can't micromanage every little thing. You've got to let people have some creative ability to put a character here or there. You can't say, yeah. don't use this guy, never use this guy, because yeah. what are they going to do? They have to use somebody. Here's the yeah. episode where Arrow fights Vertigo. Right. They, you they, know, that's... Yeah, and they, they may have wanted to save Vertigo for some movie with Green Arrow, but yeah. if you don't put him in the show, what are you going to do? Yeah, um, exactly. And I think that's where we're seeing, actually, the, the issues in, in the Marvel um, Netflix series, is because Marvel has such tight grip on like what they can do we don't see any great characters now it's, it's worked out well with daredevil season one i don't i think we can all agree season two was maybe not as good as season one i agree with that jessica jones was excellent but luke in, in my opinion luke cage was not as good as either of those two shows mm, I, I don't know I, i'm on the fence with that one okay. but I, I enjoy both of them both and and iron fist and I, i've watched about five or six episodes i'm still working my way through got still a, have not started it. got a baby so it's just slowing me down i don't have a baby <laughs> and i have not started it. <laughs> it, it it's just not what i wanted to be for a show even, even though the 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 views are there it's just not in my opinion getting the same critical acclaim that the other shows got and i think it's because they're they're so limited in, in scope and what they can do now i want to point out that out of what you just named agents of shield was not among that list agents of it's Sh- it's in the universe but I feel that, you know, when it comes to Marvel TV, I guess we'll go network, network shows. Right. You know, uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I don't think does too hot. No, it, 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 it's doing okay. I mean, it's, yeah. still, it's still getting renewed. Um, I think it's in his fourth or fifth season. But yeah, it's nowhere near the same level as Arrow or Flash or even Supergirl. Yeah. And then you look at like Agent, uh, Agent Carter that got yeah. canceled. Even yeah. though uh, it had a strong niche following, it didn't get enough uh, ratings to, to get renewed. And now they're they're in humans project. Is that TV or is that a movie? That's TV. TV. Okay. Well, yeah, but we'll, we'll see what see that. That. we'll see and how that goes. E- even with the, the the Netflix Marvel stuff, if that had come to prime time, who knows how well that that well that would have fared. Yeah, very um, true. 
But those are those are hour long shows. Yeah, would have been a shorter. But season. but I am curious as to if they were both prime time network shows, you know, what would do better? Daredevil, uh, say Daredevil showing eight p.m. and Arrow showing eight p.m. Yeah, which one's going to get more views? Yeah, I, I mean, sadly, I think I think Arrow would have because if you look at Arrow and and that whole Arrowverse, all of those they have what twenty. 25 episodes a season it's not yeah, 13 yeah. episodes yeah very you true. couldn't take what you did with daredevil and there's no 13 episode yeah. seasons on <laughs> primetime tv it's <laughs> they're long seasons yeah so what what story could they have told and i i felt several times in like daredevil like all right like or luke cage let's move along now like yeah yeah this episode is just dragging along at 13 so what, how, how would they have done 26 ex- or something ex- like that exactly so yeah. you go primetime and i don't know if they can hold up yeah very true. So yeah, it's it's a little rough there. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna chime in now. I'm All right, say here we a go. A little bit of my piece. So right. I disagree with you, Johnny, when you said that Marvel's kind of scraping and they have no other option. You kind of agree with them, Gary. That they're kind of like, I don't have anything else to choose. I'm gonna choose this for I their dis- heroes, right? Yeah, I disagree with those movies because if you look at what we've done or what they've done in the past with cartoons and comics, you're always gonna put your your A in there. You're always going to get your bees to come after, but after that, just replaying that over and over and over, you got to come with something fresh and new sometimes. So I think they're just veering out and, hey, what other characters can we introduce into this universe that people are going to love, people are going to enjoy? Johnny, you're a big advocate of having female leads, protagonists. So what what's the harm in bringing in a Captain Marvel or a Wonder Woman? You know, coming out of that realm, they're trying to expand on that. So I, I see why they're doing that. Black yeah. Panther, nobody knows of again, uh, who Black Panther is most of the time, but can they make it an intriguing character to build a franchise off of? You, you, sorry, just cutting real quick. You made that magazine error. I forgot what magazine it was, but someone had posted, put in a, printed it in a magazine, oh, Wonder Woman looks like the best Marvel film this year. <laughs> that's, that's, that's not the case. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> and you're fired. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then in the DC side, I think they've really built upon their story when they come with, you know, you look at Justice League as a whole in the cartoon, there's so many heroes villains and characters you can just kind of spread that apart and just branch out into justice league and limited teen titans all these movies that have three or four in uh justice league characters and then you have the injustice league and things like that and then when you expand into the dc universe on the tv show it started with arrow and i think it fared pretty well at the start i saw it from the beginning since episode one it did well enough after two seasons we're like hey now let's expand into something else what can we do to bring it to the TV screen but relate more to the comics? And that's why I think the extended universe for the TV shows is a little bit better and more intricate because they're focusing more on comic-related stuff, adding little Easter eggs here, taking this character. Uh, they might be throwaway villains, but they're introducing these characters so little by little. Here, here's the difference. DC has all of their own rights. They can make Batman, Superman, the whole Justice League. They, they make all their own decisions. And even though they can do that with all these TV shows, they are choosing to make Supergirl a show. They are choosing to have um, Constantine be a show, even though it didn't get picked up for a second season. They chose to make the the, the Legends of Tomorrow a show, e- even though they have all their own properties. I don't think, I, I really don't think Marvel would have made Black Panther, uh, Captain Marvel, Shazam. They would not, not, not Shazam, wow, I'm okay. sorry. Yeah. Oh, Captain, I, said, I said Captain you, Marvel and then I thought Shazam. <laughs> you uh, did it. They, they would not make Black Panther. They would not make Captain Marvel. They would not make these films for the uh, Ant-Man if they had X-Men and the Fantastic Four and Spider-Man. It would not happen. They are doing, I feel they're doing this out of necessity. If they, if they had their big hitters, we would not see these films. I agree to an extent. I disagree slightly because... At some point, you're not going to just reboot your same franchise over and over. I mean, we've kind of seen that with X-Men. It fared pretty well, with the exception of Apocalypse. And we're branching into Dark Phoenix. Let's see how that goes. But I think at some point in time, you're going to try, hopefully, to reach out for something new and different. Now, that probably would have been another 10 years from now had they been within the X-Men franchise yeah, so and things like that. Let's, 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 let's go that route. That was my last point here. So we talk, we're talking about where they are right now, what we think of each each group and we we've we've covered that fairly well future proofing what where where do they go from here who has the stronger future going forward in the next let's say you know these movies they have phases that take eight years let's say let's say next 10 years which one has a better a better chance of success and and driving market share uh i think it's a little bit of both i i think they've 
They've cemented where they are now, and they're trying to cross each other's universes. So who, who who's got the stronger one? Both. I they no, both can't win. No, I well, I think I think DC has the TV front, and Marvel has the movie front. Now, if you look at the Marvel Netflix shows, they're crossing over into that network TV platform, and it's worked, and it's kind of not worked with Iron Man. But then you look at DC, and they're trying to branch with Wonder Woman. Justice League, and they're trying to, you know, Batman versus Superman. They're jumping into that movie front. So I think, I think they're both trying to take advantage of both realms, but they're not succeeding in both. So who, who wins next ten years? Any reason? Any? So you're just saying they're both going to just exist at at parity, just the same together? Uh, yes, but Marvel will win because the movie front has a bigger, you know, global effect because people always go see movies. Not everybody watches TV. I disagree very strongly. I think DC has a much brighter future as long as they continue making some of the changes they've made and and getting better. They've had some missteps with you know their their opening kind of salvo with Man of Steel and you know BVS, Suicide Squad, but those movies all financially were successful to to some degree. They they, they didn't lose any money critically. Critically, they didn't do well. You know, as far as audience, you know. Um, online polls and stuff and uh, Rotten Tomatoes, not great scores, but they're making money. As long as the films continue to get better, they will eclipse they will eclipse Marvel because their names are bigger. They have their biggest franchises with Batman and the Justice League and, and the real Justice League, not like the Avengers where it's like kind of some of the Avengers, but not all the Avengers. They have their whole cast. And I think that's why DC is going to to get better and and, and eventually eclipse eclipse Marvel as far as what they're doing in film and, and continue to just kick butt in, in TV. Wonder Brothers versus Disney. Yeah. Yeah, that used to be a big turmoil in my heart. And, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of getting over it. Um, what I want to just add on and maybe finish this off is, as far as DC going in the future, they're, they've really only been successful in their TV, TV area. Somewhat the animated films. I'm actually not, lately I've not been a big fan of their animated films. Uh, Just League Dark was kind of disappointing um but as far as our tv shows go how many more tv shows can you do how many more characters can have their own shows like is there going to be a swamp thing tv show is there going to be is it tana you know basically in 10 years i think dc is going to run out of stuff for their tv area so if they don't pick up in their in their movies i i, I don't i don't know where dc is going to be Okay, fair enough. So you're picking Marvel. Uh, ten years from now, I I, I do think I, I I think now with the the Disney dollars, the the mouse bucks, I, I think Marvel's got a good chance of continuing this the success of movies. Um, much like I don't know if DC will will overcome with their movies. I don't know if Marvel will ever top DC's TV, uh, with their TV shows. So. But you think Marvel will still have kind of the upper hand, much like they have in this day? Yes. They'll have like relevant stuff still. Yes. That that is is what I'm going with. All right. Fair enough. So our final segment of the podcast, Speed Run. So we break down 10 news stories and fun facts that didn't make the list for a full segment. We've got one minute per topic before we move on to the next. Finished or not. We got to go fast. In the Speed Run. So Johnny Depp shocks and delights Disneyland goers by dressing in full Jack Sparrow ensemble and appears on several sections of the Pirates of the Caribbean boat ride as a marketing stunt for the upcoming Pirates movie. So I would argue that it's not for the upcoming Mar- uh, Pirates movie. He, he's been known to do this. Yes. He, he's, he's been known to just dress up as uh, Jack Sparrow and just show up on the ride just just for the heck of it. Um, I'm pissed. Weren't you at Disneyland that Were day? Were you there? I was not. Oh, this this, this was on this was specifically on a Wednesday. I know the exact day. Uh, it was on Wednesday. I had to work both jobs. I am suffering from what the internet is now calling depression. Uh, <laughs> the state of mind in which Jack Sparrow shows up to Disneyland or Johnny Depp shows up to Disneyland and you missed out on it. That's me. Uh, I am so upset I missed out on he this. He probably got paid to do it. I, I mean, he's getting paid millions just to be... Jack Sparrow as it is. I don't know if he did get paid to do this. I, he does this stuff on his own just be, just for the fans. This Mickey is Mouse, what Johnny Depp does. Mickey Mouse slid a couple thousand in that jacket pocket. He does not care. He's an island. He doesn't care about thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I'm, th- though this is... Next! <laughs> 
For Honor Season 2 will introduce new maps, gear, and two new warriors, the Shinobi and the Centurion. Ah, oh, man. So, okay. Centurion, like the cartoon? I love that cartoon. <laughs> I just I just feel it's too little too late. Like, you gotta get your servers fixed, and they're not, and the load times are long. The gameplay is so fun. God, this is one of my favorite games for gameplay. Like, I, I think about this game and just teeing off on someone and blocking and stabbing. But two characters and some maps, some gear. No. Fix your servers. Well, I mean, if you want that gear and if you want those characters, you're going to need more steel. Yeah. Um, These are not free. Or, or you can buy the season pass. So either way, you're spending some money. Yeah. Or spending time. One or the, the other. The, does the season pass unlock characters? It does, yes. Uh, so you disgusting. can do that. Is it me or is like all these games coming out with seasons where now it's almost like a competitive like E-League tournament, even though it's not in a tournament? Well, you we had season passes for a long time. No, I'm talking no, no, about no, like no, season but, one content, like season competitive two season. content. Got it. Everything is coming out in quote seasons. Well, it's a, it's a way to prolong like the longevity of your Next. title. Nintendo of America's Reggie fils may released a statement that over 2.3 million... NES classics have been shipped worldwide before production was ceased. Gee, thanks. That's a pretty good amount of those consoles. That is a pretty good amount of those consoles. I, I, I know that I you were upset. I don't that... think a lot of people got. So, I mean, I, I wonder, though, how how much people, how many people wanted them in the last three months? I'm sure that if you wanted one in the last three months, you could have got one. Uh, no, I highly I would disagree. disagree they, with that. They were hardly anywhere. And to kind of touch up on Garrett's point, which he didn't get to talk about last week, he didn't get to get one because, because of his work and because there are scalpers and people that are poaching these systems at six in the morning, one. you couldn't pre-order this. You that's, what like he, that's what he said. No, last. I didn't. You could not pre-order this. This was unpre-orderable. Okay. Which was what makes it more painful for people like Garrett that couldn't get one. I mean, because he can't show up at Walmart at six to, in the damn morning. To be honest, you got some connects, dude. Like you could have zero connects. You know, you know You're me though. That yeah, one. you know me. Dude. I got, I got connects. Joshua's got connects. You uh, uh, not one of you were like, "Hey, Garrett, you want the, you want NES class? You gotta ask." Yeah. Oh, Neither wait. of you were like, hey, you want to switch? So for everything that oh, you... Every cool. <laughs> Next. <laughs> Your At damn brother sold one. <laughs> Atlas. <laughs> Next. Atlas, the developers behind Persona 5, is finally losing its strict streaming limitations due to massive negative fan reactions. Well, duh. So I, I read about this, and in my opinion, it's not as good as, as what they're saying, or what they make it seem like. Basically, how it was before was, in, in the game, they asked you not to stream past uh, July, I think, 11th or something like that. The the, the game date. So, you know, each each day right. you're, you're playing the game, the game progresses. Uh, after that point, you would have to cease uh, streaming. So, they've kind of just eased up on it a bit. Now, you, it's still the same. Don't, don't stream past this date, but the date has moved. Yeah, it's uh, like now... November... Yeah, it's Something. like the the last third of the game you can't stream now instead of like two thirds of the game. I I think this is okay. I mean, it's better. It's but... better, but the only thing that I think is a problem is if you weren't aware of the limitations for streaming before you purchased it. But I think it's perfectly fair that it's their it's their product. If they say you can't stream it, as long as I know before I purchase, that's fine. Nah. It, I made this. If I say no, then don't buy it. If you have a problem. next, damn it. <laughs> From April 26th to May 22nd, McDonald's will have Super Mario toys and Happy Meals. There are eight different toys. Mario, Luigi, Bowser, Yoshi, Pooch, and Metal Mario. <laughs> Her name is Princess Peach, damn you. One Up Mushroom and Red Koopa Shells. Oh, that kind of space out there. Also, mu One Up Mushrooms and Red Koopa Shells. So this is going to... People are going to go crazy for these things at, at, at McDonald's. How much of a partnership... Is that we have McDonald's, like the biggest like fast food chain in the world almost. And then you have Nintendo that's uh, not on the up and up on this Not according things. to Wendy's. Does, yeah. does Wendy's have something to say? Uh, they, have, they, have always, they always talk it, man. Tweets, the mean yep. tweets? The, yeah, the, the internet has turned Wendy's, uh, the Wendy's girl into just an anime just Troll. snub. Because yeah. just... Wendy's, oh, Wendy's, oh, oh, oh. Wendy's spits hot fire on their tweets, man. Oh, yeah. It's, it's hilarious. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but, but no. these these are going to do well. My dad is a truck driver, and back in the day when Lion King came out and they had those Lion King mugs, um, people were trying to buy dozens off of him, off I of bet. his truck. And he's like, nah, man, it's not worth my job. <laughs> so uh, this this won't be that way, but it will sell well. Yeah, I mean, they McDonald's had Nintendo toys once before, yeah. and that was a hot commodity. 
And now they're bringing it back, and I think it'll do well. Check didn't, eBay. Didn't they have an old. I remember a long time ago there was a Star Fox. Next. <laughs> The DC live action TV universe just got bigger. A new digital streaming service will feature a new Titan series featuring Dick Grayson. So this is cool. I like this. Dick Grayson's awesome. He deserves a spotlight. Uh, okay, so a new digital streaming service. Does that mean this will not be on network television? So they haven't been very clear on what that exactly means. Yeah, it's. I'm, I'm assuming it's going to be some type of channel, maybe similar to like a smaller Hulu or Netflix where it's like, You'll have services on there for your shows and other creative content, or maybe even new content. Just like the CW? Yeah, maybe something like that. Okay, see, that worries me. Really? You know, that this stuff is it's not widely accessible. If you put something on, like, a new streaming service, or one not very much, one that's not heard of too much, I think your, your chances to get your name out there slim down a lot. Maybe, but they also can control the content and, yes. and and control if it gets if it gets canceled or not better. Yeah. That, that's true, but what good is that if no one's watching your show because no one knows about it? Well, for I for, know for about instance, it. Cloak and Dagger being on what's Freeform? The hell is Freeform? But you'll if you want to watch Next. 343 Studio head Kiki Wolfkill has confirmed that Halo Six will feature only Master Chief as a playable character in lieu of the backlash from Halo 5's lack of Master Chief playtime. Damn, that's a cool name though. Master yeah, I thought, I thought that too. <laughs> Kiki Wolf Kill. <laughs> no, um, but th this was a this was a big deal. People did not want to buy Halo Five if you're not playing Master Chief. Right. It That's was like a... buying Mario and not playing Mario. Yeah, it was a playing big... like Peach or something. Yeah. Super Shut Luigi. Up. Super <laughs> Luigi. U. It, it was a big misstep to to not include to not have Master Chief as the the main character. I think it was a big problem. Oh, yeah. so. I think it would have, been, would have been better if you like finished the campaign and then you do like a second story or a second quest as like bonus content. Now you can play as Locke. I, I, I would have said would have been uh, pretty cool is have, have the story of Halo 5 played from the Master Chief side and then have a side game like ODST, Reach or whatever playing from, um, ah, I forgot his name. Lock. But, but yeah, it's locked. Playing I don't want to be side. anyone but Master Chief. No, but if it's a side game sold cheaper, like extra, just yeah, new, new game, game plus. like DLC, new game plus you know. with lock. Okay, I, I think that would have been pretty cool. If you could play as an arbiter, you play with it. I'm glad you learned your lesson though. Next, Overwatch players who hop into Blizzard's MOBA, Heroes of the Storm, also known as HOTS, will have opportunities to receive free Overwatch gear, including unique and fan favorite skins, such as Officer Diva. So I know you're pretty happy about this. Or unhappy, well, maybe. Well, so, this is actually um, a weird thing. They, they have already announced that people... Not not everyone has the chance to play HOTS. Uh, some people don't have PCs. Some people just damn well don't want to play the game. Like you. Eh, well, we'll see. Um, but they've done this before. They, they've they had uh, Oni Genji, which is a really cool skin that people who played the game uh, played HOTS. You play like 15 games with a friend, and you get the skin. Um, but not again, not everyone has that. So they've announced that later on down the line, these skins will be available in regular loot boxes. Yeah. So I have mixed feelings about this. That's cool because, okay, fine. I don't have to play Heroes of the Storm, but that's not cool because that takes away from the exclusivity of it. The, 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 the way it feels. Yeah, I missed out on it, but if I can get something that everyone else can get and I put in this work kind of thing. It, it makes it slightly less special, in my opinion. And you just enjoy it because you have it? You don't. Does it really matter that someone else See, doesn't have I it? I don't have it. It's not enough that... Next. Next. Jeff Goldblum will reprise his role as Dr. Ian Malcolm and appear in Jurassic World 2. I like this a lot. This is awesome. I, I, I really like that lately Jeff Goldblum's been coming back. <laughs> Where was he for a while, <laughs> man? He took some time He's off. just hanging out. But, I mean, in, in, in the words of Dr. Ian Malcolm, uh, life... Finds a way. From, and then, you know, all the running and the screaming and the ah. <laughs> <laughs> and the go, 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 yeah, go, he, go, go. He, he, he was one of the better parts of Jurassic Park, uh, the first one, just as a supporting character. And even though 2 wasn't nearly as good, he himself was a great, you know, main, main you know, protagonist. So Yeah. No, not, cool. not to mention, here he is going to be in Thor. Yep. Ragnarok. Yeah, man. He's all over the place now. So he, yeah. he's, he's making a comeback and looking forward to it, Jeff. I, I like it. Yeah. It's going to be good, I think. I, I'm sure it's going to be a very small role, though. With Chris Pratt in there, there's not much room for him to be like the, the uh, big guy. It'd be cool to see them be buddies, though, and like solve the problem together. But there's already other, other people that are cast. Next. So Avengers 4's title may have been leaked online. 
Uh, the possible title leaked by Zoe Saldana is listed as Avengers Infinity Gauntlet. So first of all, let's get this out of the way right here, right now, Garrett. No, uh, we're gonna do this right here, right now. This is how we're gonna do it. This is clearly Avengers Part Two of Infinity War. This is not gonna be the fifth movie. See, that's where I disagree with you. Why wouldn't Avengers Infinity War Part Two be Avengers Infinity Part Two? Why let's, would they? Why would they change the name Infinity Gauntlet? Let's put some money on it. You want to put some money on I'll it? I'll put some money on it. Let's put some money on it. 20 bucks that this is Avengers Infinity War Part 2. This is the fourth movie. So, so hold on, hold on. To make things clear, 20 bucks set, says you think that uh, Avengers Infinity Gauntlet is Infinity Wars Part 2. It is not the is fifth the movie. the fourth Avengers movie. That's what you're saying. It, it, it you're is saying not... this is Avengers 4. Yes. Where I am saying that Avengers 4 will probably have a completely different title and will not be a part two of a story that's what i'm saying that, yes they will, the next one will not be called and right, we make an exception you have to finish this this is a bet that's, that's the... I, don't, I don't get to say it. i'm calling it right now you have to finish this bet yes it's very possible the next avengers film might be called avengers 4 but it is not gonna be Aven it is not the fourth avengers film it would still be the fifth T time out time out okay you are saying you johnny Avengers Infinity Gauntlet is also known as Infinity Wars Part 2. That's the fourth movie. Okay. I'm on the opposite side where I think Infinity Gauntlet would be, what, I guess, what, the fifth entry? Is that what we're going with? So you're going to say that Infinity I, Gauntlet's the fifth movie. I'm saying that there is a Avengers Part 1, there is a Avengers Part 2, and then there is a Avengers Infinity Gauntlet. All right. All right. 20 bucks. 20 bucks. 20 bucks. It's on. It's on. All right. And if you both are wrong, you give me 40 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> no way, sir. Hey, I'm All taking right. the neutral bet. So that is uh, that is our speed run topics for this week. Hopefully you enjoyed. Um, if you have any thoughts on these uh, topics yourself, feel free to email us at Super Co-op Squad or tweet to us at Super Co-op Squad. So listener mail. This first email is in response to our listener question. Uh, which was, which gaming world would you like to vacation in? So you spend a week or two, all expense paid, not rich, but, you know, you get to you get to live in the world. Uh, so we had a rather interesting email, electronic uh, mail from uh, Ron. Gary, you want to go ahead and read what Ron has to say? Ron says, I'd like to vacation in the world of Viva Piñata. It'd be fun to help breed all of the animals and play with them and pet them. I'd make my garden a utopia as more and more rare piñatas came and joined the paradise. Then, once I had enough piñatas, I'd raise the iron bars surrounding the garden, bring out my baseball bat, and go to f***ing town on those piñatas, beating candy out of them left and right, grabbing smaller ones and ripping them in half with my bare hands, candy guts spilling out everywhere. Once I was done terrorizing them and had my fill, I'd begin gathering up my sweet candy rewards. Good times. Good times. <laughs> That's that's horrifically awesome. <laughs> All right, Ron. All right. So let's that's just, where you'd vacation. Let's just bring on these party animals. Yeah, we're gonna have a good time and welcome to hell. <laughs> I, I mean, they're pinatas, man. They're made to get beat. Like it's not like he's doing something wrong. He said, "Go to freaking town <laughs> with a baseball bat, uh, ripping so, the little ones with his bare hands." Okay. Oh, okay. Style. So, you know they're sentient, right? <laughs> <laughs> they had a TV show before. Before I even get into this, <laughs> we <laughs> we get emails. They're mundane. You know, they're fun or whatever. They're, you know, they're they're some of our normal. Some of them are funny. Some of them are interesting. This is the only one that I just read it. it. <laughs> I I just didn't know what to think at first, man. <laughs> I, I would describe this as passionate. <laughs> so. This actually would probably be a pretty fun vacation. Like, you, you get to relax a little bit, and you're gardening, and you're tending, and you're petting the piñatas, and you're helping them. And then the last day before you go home, you just bring out that old slugger, man, that old Louisville slugger, and just start hammering away. Um, you, you have something to say, Joshua? I was going to say, how much is it going to cost you to ship all that candy back? I mean, it's just candy, man. Like, Yeah, you can't take that overseas. Well, I mean, this it's like a... I don't know, man. Maybe he'll just eat it all. <laughs> now you just killed him all for no reason. I mean, he had a good time. Just build your own Willy Wonka factory. This is... 
This is not what I had in mind when I thought of someone vacationing. Yeah, me either. When we <laughs> ask this question now, but Ron, more power to you. You've seen those like uh, those stress uh, stress. It's a stress ball. No, this the fidget widget. It's the rooms where you can like destroy stuff. Oh yeah, you can yeah pay yeah. to like destroy like plates glass and, and plates and like stereo systems and things like that. They actually TVs. have one at Six Flags. That's yeah, cool. Yeah. This is what it reminds me of. Just going, having a good time, relaxing, and then just. Going to town. See, do the pinatas know that they're about to be brought no, to town? No, he said don't. raise the iron bars. So <laughs> clearly, they they are not aware Man, of this. That is, they so can't escape. Depressing. <laughs> Yeah, Ron. Um, hopefully, you know, just remember that this is just a game, man. It's just a game. <laughs> well, to him, yes, it is just a game. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Well, thank you, Ron. Leave open your so we got uh, electronic uh, mail number two. Uh, go ahead and read this one, Joshua. All right. This email is from Alan, and Alan says, I would like to visit the world of The Sims with full player, full player controls still, of course. Bow chicka wow wow. I might never leave. You guys are vacationing for all the wrong reasons, man. I don't know, man. It, being having full player control. Do you just... understand what he meant by bow chicka wow wow? I mean, yeah, there's that, but you can do a whole bunch of other stuff too, Johnny. Like make a house. I can do that at home right now. I can you make can, a house. You can't make a house. I mean, I could try to build one. Yeah, there Johnny. you go. Didn't you say last time that you played a Sims game and you locked all them people in those houses? Trapped them in those doors they couldn't get out of. Yes. Throw them in a pool without a ladder. Don't tell me there's people in the real world that you were just like, I wish I could throw you in a pool and you can never get out. See, but <laughs> well, that's not what he's saying. <laughs> we're talking about vacation, man. He's talking about just having a good time. Just having a good a time. real and, good time. And controlling What's wrong with that? everybody having around Having background them. music? He, he has full... Okay, I, I, I suppose it's, it's similar. It's like going to Vegas. It... There's nothing See, like you're, you're the, you don't you're, have to pay any money. You're the guy that played Roller you're Coaster Ty- Tycoon, put the roller coaster out <laughs> full speed, and didn't finish the track. Okay, I've done that a few times, yes, and then just watch it blow up. But what I like to do, I like to put someone on an island or, or put them like in an area where they can walk in, but then the exit says, do not enter. And they turn around, and there's a sign that says, do not exit, do not enter. They just walk back and forth. They can't leave because they're not going to break the rules. And then they just throw up because they, you know, because you know they're just sitting there with their own feces and dirt and disgusting stuff. That was me. You're mean. <laughs> Alan's not hurting anybody that we know of. He's not hurting anybody. But all right, Alan. Especially no pinatas. Yeah, he's not. <laughs> he's a little bit more subtle about what he might be doing. He's just um, in control. That's it. Yeah. So, uh, Ron, Alan, thank you for uh, your emails, guys. Uh, interesting as they. What about us? What about you? Oh, yeah. Where would we vacation? You first. And then you second, Johnny. And then me last. Because I said so. So if it were up to me, I, I don't remember the name of the world. But I would vacation in the world of Okami. Mm. Beautiful, lush flowers. Just the scenery is beautiful, honestly. Uh, you got little Amaterasu just painting the world. It, it's it's a really, really nice place I'd like to visit. You know, it's it's uh, other than all the demons and, you know. I don't worry about Orochi and <laughs> that stuff. Nine Tails. You know, other than that, though, beautiful, beautiful place. Okay, so I have a real one, and then I have the one that I... It's not a game, I guess, but kind well, of a game. So, so the one that's not real, just... Okay, let me know if this is acceptable to you guys. And if it's not, I will tell you the other one. But, Gare, as you know, I don't know why I have some sort of desire some sort of need to to fight someone in like you know like a mickey mouse costume or like any, anyone that's in like one of those like character costumes so i would like to like go live in the in the world of the connect Disneyland, disneyland game and if there are characters in that game that are dressed up like you know like characters that you see at disneyland like in the you know their garb i just want to like run and just tackle one and just beat them up so what is up with you and Anti Disney <laughs> violence. It's not. No, it's not. It's not. People. It's not Disney. I just whenever I like if I'm at it a base, is Disney. if I'm at, if I'm at a basketball game and I see like you don't like mascots. Yeah, if I see in someone suits. in a mascot suit, I just want to run up and tackle them and just whack, 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 whack. What just, is wrong with you? I don't know, Garrett. It's hot enough. In this that is news. You know, you this, know that I feel I this actually, way, right? Because I, 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 I told you. Don't remember this. I, you don't remember I t- every time I, I see don't one remember of my, you wanting to beat the hell out of mascots. Did you get scared as a kid? I don't know. But that'd be where I'd vacation. Any any game where there's mascots that I can just like he's just doing his mascot job and I just run up and tackle him. Like whap, 
wah, wah. This is what you do for a vacation. Wow. I mean, look at these two guys. World star. <laughs> That's what I would do. Does, does that count? Or do um, I have to give yeah, a that, that counts. It's you, a you it's an alternate Disneyland. Doesn't count for here. It just be roller coaster tycoon. I don't know. That counts. That, oh, oh yeah. Man. Yeah. How about how about you go there? Well, they have Disneyland there. He can do that too. Um, mess up the log ride. What, what, just out of curiosity. Well, what was your other one? So the other one was um, again. I don't know the world either, but I'd like to go to uh, whatever island Crash Bandicoot lives on. Because those wampa fruits, <laughs> those wampum fruits, those look really good. So I would just want to go there and collect them and, and eat some. So yeah. that that'd be my vacation. Just on a tropical island and eating wampum fruit. Maybe yeah. get maybe get that mask. Who and just Does he live there or was he taken there by Neo Cortex? No, he lives there, bro. He lives there. Neo's not Neo doesn't belong. So yeah, just okay, get just okay. get the fruit. And that'd be that'd be awesome. Cool. Alright. I accept that one more than your other one. <laughs> Thank you. So just be just because this is pretty cool to me. I would live in the world of Xenoblade Chronicles. Okay, okay. So they got some really cool looking towns. They got some nice villages. They got some nice shores. But big giant monsters. You live on a giant beast. Okay, I did not know that. You live on a giant mechanical beast. A uh, mechanical beast. Oh, well, they're kind of robots, kind of living creatures. It's kind of a weird okay, thing. Okay, okay. But you're no, living buy that. on a creature that was a god slash deity over X amount of years. And that is pretty cool because once once you get through that game, you see the different levels, and there's actually two of them that fight. They're kind of stuck in this battle, but jeez, you live on them, and that's that's just amazing to me. That's pretty cool. That's a pretty cool scope of the game. All right, cool. Well, nice. those are our vacation spots. I like that one more than both of Johnny's. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Uh, so, uh, listener uh, question this week: uh, You know, set it up. You open a door, and you're face to face with the most terrifying, most challenging video game boss you've ever faced. Uh, which video game boss would that be that you just got got to fight him? What, what's the worst video game boss you can think of that you just wouldn't want to fight? So, so let us know who that might be. So we're talking about like ones we like we can't beat or no. that's the one that I don't want to face. Whatever one that you would be like, oh, my God, I have to fight this guy. I'm in trouble. The, okay. the most terrifying one that you can think of. Doesn't matter if he personally was hard for you to beat or not. Player two. So. All right. So think about it. Email us. Uh, on email us at supercoopsquad at gmail com or hit us up on Twitter at supercoopsquad and let us know what your uh your answer would be. Every- we appreciate everyone that emails, tweets, or messages us. Uh, thanks for having fun with us and for sharing your opinions. And um, yeah, we'll get back to you next week with the winners of the April giveaway. So, passing the controller, what's going on with us outside the world of the podcast? So if I remember correctly, I gave you the NES Classic controller. A little the NES mini cable. Yeah, two and mm-hmm. a half foot cable, that little Thank short you. cable. But as Gary pointed out, you can sit right up on that TV. You can turn that, that game on and off what you're liking. Thank you. Thank you for this raggedy controller. Sir. You're welcome. All it right. works at least. Um, So I went to go watch uh, Fate of the Furious this week. Ooh. I'm sorry. No, I liked it a lot. I liked it a lot. They raced a submarine. Okay, so... It's that was stupid. your biggest complaint. No, it, you're right. It is stupid. It is the stupidest thing I've seen ever for <laughs> someone to race a submarine. Because first of all, a car is just faster than a submarine. There's just no question. It's faster. No, no way, no how. There's no way the submarine would even have a hope well, to catch a car. I mean, what if a submarine had boosters? Like they put NOS in the submarine? Yeah. Because they <laughs> put guess, NOS in everything else. I guess they could. Um, that part put is NOS in your cheeseburger. Wow, it'd be bad news for you. <laughs> Um, ooh, coming out the back after you're done with cheeseburger. Boosting that, all over the that place. That toilet? Oh my gosh. Um, but the, the movie itself is fun. It's so fun and like just high octane adrenaline. I mean, I say that because it's a car movie, but it's actually, it, it was really fun to watch. I, I love the fight scene. I love the comedy. I love the racing. Um, and you know what I really love? I love that it's, it's one of the few movies, series, or franchises that I can, completely have my full willful suspension of belief like i just understand nothing here makes sense they, they literally like hack every car that has like an onboard computer and they make the cars drive themselves stupid now nah, hold it but you can get past it so but, okay it's like it's like sharknado we talked about that a few times sharknado is just so mindlessly stupid and people watch it because they know it's stupid and I, I know this i know that it's stupid but that's why, like, because they, they're not even trying to have any sort of semblance of reality. They just said, screw it. 
We don't. We know it's not real. We're just gonna have fun. That's cool. Mm-hmm. I can get down with that. Okay. I can't get down with it if you try to make your movie real and then you just screw up because of small inconsistencies. <laughs> um. Yeah. So that was fun. Uh, as he does just all the time. You know, Dwayne the Rock Johnson. Just he is so fun to see on screen, man. He just. Yep. He just. The way he delivers his lines, it's just it's just fun. So that was me. The Rock. Love that movie. Awesome. Go ahead, Garrett. Uh, passing you the controller. You know, I'm going to go ahead and give you a nice controller. Oh, that's a change. I'm going to give you uh, just the, 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 the Wii Zapper. What's wrong with it? You get the Wii Zapper from is the Nintendo like only Wii. Half of it? And it's just, it's just the, the plastic molding. <laughs> it doesn't have the Wii remote in it. <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> there you go, buddy. This Thank excellent you. piece of plastic. Um. All right. Lately, past couple days, I've just been beating my head against the wall. That is Kingdom Hearts: Chain of Memories. Oh, you're doing that? <laughs> oh man. Uh, I looked up how how long to beat. They said about 24 hours. So I'm like, okay, I better get started. I feel like I'm pretty close though. I'm only nine hours in. I feel like I'm pretty close. So we'll see how that goes. Although uh, I- I'm having a problem with boss fights. That's what's stopping me. I can get past the game. I can do regular fights. I can figure out where to go, what to do. Boss fights are kicking my ass. Get good. I see. I know you're going to say that. Unfortunately, it's not up to me to get good because this entire combat system is based around random cards. It's not you, random. You, you, you can set them. You can you can put them in combos and stuff or whatever you need to do. But the way that they have it set, it's not completely up to me. I can set up whatever combos I want, but if this boss has a zero card, that nullifies whatever I'm doing. Then make sure that you have a zero card yourself. So now how do I use my combo if there's a zero card being used? You just got to get good. See, I, I did there it. There we go. Yeah, learn learn how to play the game. How about the game just be a regular old hack and slash Sorry. Char- character action? Now that's that's what I would like. Well, you got two weeks to get it done, bro. Or yeah. you don't get the money. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. I'm I'm trying, man. We'll see. I'm you trying. can do it. I hate this game. It's funny that all it takes for you to watch or do something is some money. Well, specifically for injustice. Fair um, enough. All right, Joshua. I'm gonna get you. All right. See, now I got this crappy plastic thing. Yeah. I, I not much I can do with it because there's no Wii or none check. So I'm pointing at the screen, but nothing's happening. Uh, I can't figure out why. <laughs> but you, sir, I got I, I see in, in this bin here, I have this kind of orange looking gun. Yes. Uh, clang, clang, <laughs> clang, clang. I think they call it the uh, I think they call it the Nintendo Zapper. Yeah, it's the better version that you got. Unfortunately, I'm sorry. Yeah, well, here you go. Nice. Clang, clang. House of the Dead or something. <laughs> On the NES. <laughs> oh, wow. Nice. Left for Dead. Appreciate it. So I had a game night with uh, one of my friends, uh, Kathy, and her boyfriend and a bunch of friends. Um, we played the game once. It's uh, the game where you have like 25 different little cards, and it's either blue team or red team, and you have... Code two- names. Yes. Thank you. Did you know there's an adult version? I have it right there on the shelf next to the regular code names. I've never played this game. You were there for code name? No, I was you, out there for code played Codenames. Codenames I have not us. played Codenames. Okay, well, it's kind of like an extended version of Taboo, but it's somewhat in reverse. I've That's not, not an accurate description, but okay. So you have to give them the description while they give you the word? You give a word, <laughs> and then they guess other words that there are in be... the pile. I'll, I'll learn it when I <laughs> play it. Yeah, But go ahead and talk about your experience. So we played that. That was a lot of fun, hanging out with them. I am looking forward to opening Puyo Puyo Tetris. Oh, I'll nice. Stream it. Don't you <laughs> don't you dare stream it. <laughs> Just not the story mode, right? Or is it all of it? <laughs> no, no, the story mode. I don't remember. Um, so I bought that. I'm going to open it sometime this week. I bought Mario Kart 8 Deluxe for the Switch. Haven't opened that one yet, so looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to Guardians of the Gal- Galaxy Volume 2 because that launches this week as well. Number 2. Number 2. Volume number 2. Really excited for that. And yeah. I, I, I was really excited for the... If Marvel vs. Capcom, Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, like debut and trailer, really excited for for Sigma. Super excited for what the changes are going to be. I'm just looking forward to putting that game in my hands. Like, it better be available to play in June. It's going to be a while. June is like two months away. No, but I mean, you're talking like I can't wait to get my hands on the game. Yeah, kind of like he meant the demo. It. Yeah, okay. and then right. I can play it like two more months later, and we'll be cool about it. Hopefully cool. It's there. And I haven't touched Zelda at all about the last ten days. What? Yeah, I know, right? 
I'm gonna somehow, some way, make time this week. Just go to Hyrule Castle, just beat Ganon, off. and then finish it. And then when beat they release, Ganon off. <laughs> 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 no, no, thank you. Drag my. I'll just kill him. Uh, I'll finish that, and then later when they release the DLC, then I'll catch up on the last bit of shrines, whatever extra content they throw in the middle of the year, and then at the end of the year, whatever the that extended content is too. All right, Johnny, you did my man a real dirty one. <laughs> so what I'm going to give you is a piece of plastic as well. What you can do is you can imagine that you're reeling in fish, but you can't reel in fish because number one, you don't have the game. You don't even have the system. You have this wee plastic fishing rod, and uh, the and and the crank my... and the crank handle broke off, so you can't even reel in fish. You All gave right. me a wee. Fishing rod? Yeah. I remember that. With with no game, no you know, system, and no crank to reel and fish. It's not your duty to avenge him. I'm not avenging him. What I, are you doing? You just said, like, I did your man dirty. You did. And now I am doing you dirty. <laughs> yes, you're avenging him. That's, that's, like, that's specifically that's, what you're that's doing. That's not avenging him. I just want to see you rot in the same cell you put him in. That is almost the... the the dictionary definition of avenging. We may not save the earth, but we'll damn well avenge it. I don't like you punching mascots. Yeah. <sighs> and I want to give away bad controllers, but not to Joshua because he's never done me dirty. I don't know what to tell you. It's totally I got, I got We're going to change the ones. player order. We'll see. <laughs> player order. All right, guys. Well, that is our show for this week. These are the topics we want to talk about and the news and announcements when to go over. Um, let us know your thoughts, guys. As always, you can reach us on Twitter at Super Club Squad or by email. Um, supercoopsquad at gmail.com and don't forget to check out our sister podcast Hooked on Comics that's hosted by Lila Balduff and myself Johnny Mack we pick two favorite comic books each week and break them down and discuss all the comic goodness uh, that we that we read uh, as always guys thank you for listening and uh, we'll see you next week I'm Johnny Mack I'm Garrett I'm Joshua later do 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 do